it'll be interesting to see how they handle it today. Miles Campbell with the return, taking the ball from the six-yard line. Spin move for Campbell as he comes to the near side. And Campbell all the way up to the 47-yard line, a close to 40-yard return for the speedster Miles Campbell and great field position for the Eagles to start this game. And when you're running an offense that is run-based, having short yardage to go to get to a touchdown is always best. Uh, can this offense get the run game going? That's what they're going to be trying to see. Me and you have called Georgia Southern games before for Coach Summers. is like, if we have to pass 10, 12 times, we're probably going to lose. So they like to run the ball, so sit back and get ready for a run game of Georgia Southern. Well, the quarterback is number four, Shy Wirtz, a 5'11", 190-pound redshirt freshman out of Clinton, South Carolina. And Newberry High School takes the opening snap. Going to throw it on the opening snap to Miles Campbell, who just had the big kick, uh, kick return. And Campbell picks up about five yards on that opening pass. And Coach Summers lets us know we don't know much. <laughs> we come here looking for the run, and the first play, play is a pass. Nice, qu quick pass out to the edges. And that's yeah. where they like to throw the ball. And, I was, on the edges. and that was the point I was going to make. That's a play to the perimeter. It's like a run play almost. They want to get the ball out on the edge on the perimeter. Wirtz is running the option, has Campbell blocking for him, and Wirtz gets to the 44-yard line and going to be shy of the first down by about a couple yards. The one thing that this New Hampshire defense is going to have to do is keep its assignments all day long. Even when they're having success against you, you can't just come off your assignment. That's when the big hole opens up. It's all about integrity trying to stop this spread option offense. Third down and a short two from the 44-yard line. Wirtz hands off to Fields, and Fields has the first down and more all the way down to the 34-yard line before being tackled by the linebacker, Quinlan Dean. But a first down carry, a first down conversion on third down. They were 0 for 15 on their third downs against Auburn. And that's the one thing. You, you kind of have to throw that Auburn tape out of the window. Uh, you were playing against a whole different animal. Today, you should be able to get some success in running the ball, uh, whether it's second and long or third and short. Ramsby gets the carry, and Ramsby down to about the 32 as he picks up three on the play. Ryan Sosnick, the defensive tackle, making the stop for New Hampshire. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your D tackle. Holt, Sosnick, Horton, uh, to not get too antsy and decide, well, I'm going to swim into this gap and lose the integrity uh, once you start losing some of those battles up front. Wirtz on the keeper driving his feet inside the 25 and down to the 24. So the Eagles able to run the ball effectively here on this opening possession. Of course, they had less than 80 yards of total offense against Auburn. So it's been a different kind of day already for Georgia Southern. And this offensive line up front uh, just did battle with probably one of the top uh, 10 defenses in the country dealing with Auburn. So uh, they're kind of licking their chops today to get at New Hampshire. First and 10 from the 25. Wirtz running option, now going to stop and throw, now going to run. And Wirtz gets out of one tackle, but not the next one. Drop back at the 30-yard line. If you see here on this play, uh, actually, the receiver, Malik Henry, slipped uh, down the field. You can kind of see him coming out of your left screen of your corner right here. He slips right there. Shy Wirtz feels like he can't make the pass and tries to make something with his feet. DeAndre Drummond Myrie with the tackle behind the line of scrimmage and now second down and 15. Wirtz tosses the field ball on the ground. It's recovered by New Hampshire at the 29-yard line. Bad pitch by Wirtz behind the running back. And Brian Carter, the redshirt freshman defensive end, jumped on it for the Wildcats. Wirtz just held on to it just too long, too long to make that read. Once the running back gets parallel to you, you have to just take the ball. But the defensive line right there, staying in their hole. That's what we're going to talk about all day, about them staying where they're supposed to be, gap integrity right there, scared him off from running the ball. He made a leg pitch, big turnover for New Hampshire. So our first chance to see the Wildcats on offense as they take over the 30. They're down a man today. Malik Love did not make the trip with a hamstring injury. So that's a big setback for the Wildcats today. And they try to run the ball off tackle and Evan Gray is dropped for a loss of a couple of yards, and there's also a flag down on the field. Uh, 
Holding is going to be the call against New Hampshire. Trevor Knight, a very talented quarterback. We know what he can do with his legs. Uh, if you're Georgia Southern, you came in here to, to make uh, life miserable for him trying to throw the ball. You want to keep him in the pocket, make him have to throw the ball. Uh, this offensive line mm, testing a little bit last week against Maine, but I think they're going to get their uh, hands full today with this deep front well, of having, Georgia Southern. Having to replace three multiple-year starters on the offensive line this year, McInerney at right tackle and Heron at left tackle, the only returning starters out of the five up front. Pass downfield, caught at the 40-yard line and down to the 46 goes Neil O'Connor, their star wide receiver, and even more on O'Connor's shoulders this afternoon with Malik Love out with the injury. That'll move the sticks and a first down for the Wildcats at their own 46. Simple throw and catch right there. Uh, Neil O'Connor, uh, as uh, Coach said, uh, he's not flashy. He just gets the job done, and that's his kind of lunch pail. Usually when you say lunch pail, you're talking about your O&D line, but he's a lunch pail type receiver. Passes batted down at the line of scrimmage as the Georgia Southern defensive line got penetration. And I thought all things considered going up and having the mismatch of going up against Auburn's offensive line a week ago, they were pretty pleased with the effort of that defensive line for Georgia Southern at Jordan-Hare Stadium. Yeah, early on, they were holding their own against Auburn. Auburn, as the game kept going, um, wore them down in the second half. But that first half, uh, they were kind of bend but don't break, made them kick a lot of field goals. Second down and 10. Carey's going to go to Goodrich, and Goodrich still on his feet, picks up the first down at the 42. Donald Goodrich, who had only two carries last week after an early fumble, picks up the first down for the Wildcats as they move into Eagles territory. Nice blocking up front by this old line, watching it all down. Backside blocks always important, and the tailback making the read to kind of squirt to, through. Linebackers overreaching and uh, 10 yards right there. Uh, running back by committee or panel, in a sense, for this New Hampshire offense. Now a pistol formation here as they fake the handoff to Gray. And Knight's going to run to the 40-yard line and get dropped right across the 40-yard line as he picks up about two yards on the play. Right there, Logan Hunt showing you a lot of athleticism for a nose tackle, being able to come here on this scramble, get off his block, and still having enough speed right here to come into the picture as a nose tackle and make that play. And Tyson Summers told us they needed to get more consistent play out of Logan Hunt this week. Second down right up the middle. Evan Gray crashes down to the 32-yard line. Joshua Moon, who was hurt early in that game against Auburn, in there early here today. He makes the tackle, but a first down carry for Gray as they move the sticks to the 32. And you can tell that New Hampshire has done film study and feels like they can run this ball on this defense up in the middle. Uh, early on here on this drive, you can see uh, their big runs have come right up the middle of the defense. Handoff goes to Gray, and great penetration that time by the Eagles on defense as Melton Brown, the freshman out of Louisville, Georgia, in on that tackle for his first career tackle as a Georgia Southern Eagle. Now, Georgia Southern uh, offensively runs the ball, so this defense should be ready to <laughs> be able to stop the run in the best way to, uh, no matter if high school, college, or pros, defensive line pressure uh, kills run plays, period. Uh, and, and this defensive line has the size and the athleticism to do that. Brings up second down and 10 with the ball at the 32. Knight with a pocket to throw out of. Fires this way, looking for O'Connor at the 11-yard line. Sells out of bounds. Boundary on the coverage for Georgia Southern. Jay Boundary had probably the best game of any defender for the Eagles last week with 12 tackles, a career high, and also an interception against Auburn. And when you look at this defense... Uh, it, it went against a team last week with a lot of talent. So some of these players, uh, it, it's, a, it's a good thing and a bad thing. Sometimes playing against top competition allows you to settle in Georgia Southern uh, across the defensive front. Being young is, is going to be great today. Out on the edge to O'Connor, and O'Connor is going to dive for the sticks and be close to a first down. Great effort by Neil O'Connor on the little fast pass to the edge, and he was able to move the sticks and pick up the first down at the 21. Jim Rat, uh, lunch pail, uh, plumbing, all kind of <laughs> things <laughs> yeah. Neil O'Connor can do for this offense. 
Sean McDonald, the 19th year head coach for New Hampshire, who's led him to the FCF playoffs 13 consecutive years, said O'Donnell's typical UNH player, not flashy, just gets the job done. Heavy rush, night being chased, going to throw on the run and off the hands of his receiver at the 12-yard line. That was Justin Malone Woods, the tight end, who was dragging across the middle and trying to keep up with his quarterback, and now it's going to be second down and 10. It's three three step drop right here, nothing there. The offensive line trying to cut the defensive line's hands down. Uh, great play, trying to scramble and get something out of that. Not losing the middle yards, Trevor Knight. So second down and 10, now ball at the 21 yard line. New Hampshire has driven from their 30 after recovering a Georgia Southern fumble. Gallagher in motion. They swing it back here to O'Connor, coming back the other way on the end around, and O'Connor down to the 17-yard line before being tackled by Tamarcio Reese, the Sam linebacker. A little early trickery here by New Hampshire. Last week, uh, Neil O'Connor throwing a double pass touchdown for this team. Uh, you have to be able to stay home with this team. They will sprinkle in. Uh, those type plays to make sure you're honest with your defense integrity. Yeah, McDonald told us that they have a list and a menu of trick plays, and we've seen one early here on this opening possession. Now it's third down. And a timeout has been called by New Hampshire. Seven minutes, 22 seconds to play in the opening period. We're scoreless, but the Wildcats driving on the Eagles. Third down and six for New Hampshire from the Georgia Southern 17. Gray gets the carry. Second effort, picks up the first down or close to it inside the 11-yard line. I think he picks up the first down. Great second effort by Evan Gray to get the first. And Gray was the tailback last week that got most of the work in this offense. Donald Goodridge, just a couple of carries for him. But Gray definitely uh, last week uh, carrying the ball other than the quarterback, Trevor Knight, second lead rusher on the team in that game against Maine. Yeah, career high 18 carries, career high 74 yards for Gray. Now it's first and 10 from just outside the 10 yard line. Gray going to get it again. No play action. Pass thrown complete to O'Connor for the touchdown. They're big on play action. They get a lot of big plays. Their first touchdown of the day comes on play action on the catch by O'Connor. Nice play execution here by Trevor Knight and Neil O'Connor. Got the run game going. Just a simple run fake, quick throw. Perfect placement right there for O'Connor just to run under the ball. Uh, nice executed drive by New Hampshire. Now be careful. They'll trick you out of this muddle huddle, and O'Connor will throw for a two-point conversion here. Looks like that's what they're going to do here. Knight throws for two, and Georgia Southern never reacts to it, and Justin Malone Woods makes the catch for a two-point conversion. So twice on this opening possession, we see some trickeration from New Hampshire. They take the early lead, 8-0 here in Birmingham. Here's him counting out. I don't hear any. So New Hampshire has taken a 8 nothing lead on Georgia Southern on the 10-yard touchdown pass from Trevor Knight to Neil O'Connor, capping a 13-play 70-yard drive. And then the Wildcats get the two-point conversion on the completion tonight to Justin Malone Woods. So a 8 nothing lead for the Wildcats off of their opening possession that came after Georgia Southern had fumbled their opening possession. Now, Wayne, what were they supposed to be doing on this two-point conversion defensively? All, all of this is about the look. Trevor Knight knows in a certain look he can go ahead on and run the fake right there. Nobody's going with Justin Moan Woods. He, I would say he snuck out of the, the set, but it was only two people up there that could go out for passes. Nice execution uh, right there on that two-point conversion. Ramsby retreats and has the ball hit at the goal line. Now he's going to take it from the goal line. Ramsby trying to come to the near side. And Ramsby going to be dropped at the 14-yard line by Goodrich, the running back playing special teams. And poor field position for the Eagles to start their second possession. And it looks like we have a man down as well for the Wildcats. Rick Ellison, the strong safety playing on special teams as well. Looks like he was shaken up on the play. L.A. Ramsey casually just kind of going to get the ball. 
Uh, all return men are taught to get behind the ball and run into the ball. Right there, Ramsey kind of just took for granted the ball was going to go in the end zone. Uh, the ball did not. It bounced back into the field of play. Uh, and right there, that's why uh, great coverage by New Hampshire. Yeah, Ramsby thought the ball was going to hit that goal line and just bounce on through the end zone instead of kind of kicked back, which made him have to field the ball and bring it out. So a great kick by Elwood, the New Hampshire uh, place kicker. He, he was one of five on touchbacks last week after they gave up a big return on the first uh, kickoff. Uh, they get great coverage here on the second one, so the Eagles are starting from their 14-yard line. Wirtz comes to the near side, going to keep it. Looks like he tripped over his own man. Looks like Ellis Richardson, who's the H-back on the play and a former quarterback himself, looks like he tripped over his own man's foot. Yeah, Richardson right here is going for the cut. Coming out of the backfield, trying to cut the linebacker down. And right there, his legs swiped his own player and brought him down. If he didn't hit his leg, uh, he definitely would have picked up another three to four yards. As it was, he picked up five. So second down and five for Wirtz in this Eagles offense from the 19. Fields goes in motion. Handoff goes to Ramsby. And Ramsby gets to the 22. And he's going to be short of the first down by a couple of yards. Again, Quinlan Dean on that tackle. Dean, one of the sophomore linebackers, along with Jared Keel, replacing two starters in that linebacking core this year for the Wildcats. But they feel comfortable with Keel and Dean. Both of them played a lot last year as well. Third down works. Running to his right, being chased, throwing on the run, throws it away. There's a flag down at the 21-yard line. It's probably going against the Eagles, which means this will probably be a punting situation coming up for Georgia Southern. And it seemed from the beginning that maybe Wirtz and OB Fortune were not on the same page right there. Wirtz looked like he was waiting on a receiver to come open to throw the ball. Uh, the receiver was going downfield, so he did the best he could with, was getting out the pocket and throwing it away. Marshall Lewis is our referee today. You see the call is holding against Georgia Southern. It will be declined, so the Eagles are going to have to punt this away. Seems like it might be a little hesitation on whether they were going to try to go for it or not, Matt. It was <laughs> yeah, I, no, I don't think they need to be going for it right here on a fourth and two from their own 22. And that's the one thing, when you run the ball like Georgia Southern, you can't have penalties to put you behind a schedule. And, and, and that is what can do a run-based offense in, having a third and long or putting you behind on your first downs. Matt Flynn punted 11 times a week ago against Auburn. This is a short kick that Horn comes up to take on the run at the 44-yard line and a nice open field tackle that time by Georgia Southern and Dexter Carter to keep Horn from advancing. But good field position for the Wildcats as they go on offense for the second time today. And I'm quite sure when Horn gets to the sideline, his coach is going to have something to say to him. Come up and field the ball, but fair catch the ball in that situation. The defense is right there. Uh, and that kind of timing by the defense is, usually turns into a turnover. So the Wildcats go back on offense. Knight was 3 of 6 for 39 yards and a touchdown on that opening possession, a 70-yard drive after the fumble by Georgia Southern. And so now the Wildcats go back on offense, first and 10 from their own 44. New Hampshire, 24-23 winners last week over May on a Thursday night in the battle for the Bryce Cowell Musket. It's seventh straight year they'd won that big rivalry game in the 14th year out of 15 for the Wildcats, who have been to the FCS playoffs now 13 straight years. That's the longest streak in the nation. It started with their 2004 victory over Georgia Southern. And Sean McDonald says good players and good coaches. That's how you get there each and every year for the last 13 years. One thing about Trevor Knight in this offense, in that first drive, you can see what Coach said, he's been, his improvement, one of his biggest improvement is decision making. And you can see in that drive, that was a well orchestrated drive by him, knowing even when to get out of the pocket, throw it away, uh, when to try to make something with his feet. Looks much more comfortable today uh, than we saw him against Maine. Looks like they're trying to make an adjustment with the sticks over on the far sideline. 
and that's why we have a delay in the action. But going back to what you were saying about Coach McDonald, I said, yeah, really, it's, a, it's blessed to have a belief in the culture and, and a belief of how we do things. Not a whole lot of bells and whistles at New Hampshire, kind of a blue-collar place, chip-on-your-shoulder kind of program because we don't have a lot of the things that some of the other programs have. Well, the one thing they have is stability at the head coaching spot, being here uh, for the, since 1999 is McDonald, and, and when you can have that kind of stability, you can build a program. Knight wants to throw. He's got O'Connor wide open at the 39-yard line. Busted coverage. O'Connor, a big gainer, deep into Eagles territory at the 29. Neil O'Connor making his impact in this first quarter. He is there, Mr. Everything for this offense. And as you said, Matt, just busted coverage. Nobody is covering the best player they have on offense, which is surprising. And he's uh, taking advantage of them uh, once again, making a big play. That's his fourth catch already in this ball game, And with that catch, he goes over 1,000 yards receiving for his career. Evan Gray on the carry. Gets knocked sideways that time as he picks up just a couple of yards on the play. Tackle made by Todd Bradley, the linebacker. You can see this offense in, in one week has grown up last week against Maine. Trevor Knight was the person having to scramble and make plays. Now you see uh, everybody wants to get in. Coach has called everybody out. Look, you're going to have to help him. Uh, Goodrich, Gray, and we know what O'Connor can do. Uh, so far, good offense here by New Hampshire. Second down, handoff goes to Gray. Gray battles, breaks out of a tackle inside the 20 and down to the 18. Evan Gray picks up the first down. Second time in this quarter, he has been able to pick up a first down with second effort. Right now, Gray is red hot. Just second effort right here. Getting in the line, getting kind of tied up, getting off the linebacker, spinning, and punishing anyone that wants to stop him from getting in the end zone. Gray is a bowling ball, 5'10", 228, sophomore out of Centerville, Virginia, and Westfield High School. And once again, the Wildcats are deep in Eagles territory here in this first quarter. Handoff goes to Goodrich, tries to weave his way through the traffic jam and gets down to the 14-yard line, picks up about four on the play. Both of these backs are, are running hard. Coach McDonald talked about how he, they just interchangeable. It doesn't really matter. Uh, run a couple of plays. If you get tired, come over. He doesn't. He has. He doesn't really have a starter. He just has running back. Thing that strikes me, Wayne, is neither one of these running backs are going down on first contact. Second down for the Wildcats. Knight wants to throw. Throws on a crossing pattern. That's a first down. O'Connor with his fifth catch of the quarter. And a first and goal to go coming up for the Wildcats. And when you can run the ball like New Hampshire has so far in this quarter, it definitely puts a, a, a lot of holes in the defense because people now start trying to antsy up and O'Donnell and, make, and, and Trevor Knight are definitely on the same page. O'Connor CAA, that's the Colonial Athletic Association preseason all-conference, third team at the end of last season. Knight going to run it, and Knight down to the two-yard line. Joshua Moon making the tackle for the Eagles, stopping him shy of the goal line. And Matt, that, didn't, that only got two yards, but Trevor Knight has to pull some of these plays to keep the defense in. You can see right there, uh, was able to get to the edge because the defensive ends are crashing trying to stop that running game with the running backs. You pull the ball to make sure they have to understand you're not going to just be able to go down and stop my running backs. Second down and goal to go. McDonald says that Knight here in his second year as the starting quarterback has a great understanding of what they need to do to win a ball game. Handoff, Gray, Gray battles into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Wildcats have taken a 14 to nothing lead here in Birmingham. What effort by Gray and Goodrich <laughs> on this drive. The, the yards after contact that both of them are making. Gray, short, compact, just plowing himself into the end zone uh, right there. Just running over linebackers, D-linemen, no matter who's grabbing him. He's just keeping his legs driving, getting into the end zone. Max Pedinoff lines up for the PAT. And he puts it through. And with one minute and 56 seconds to play here in the first quarter, stunning 
opening quarter for New Hampshire as the Wildcats have jumped out to a 15 to nothing lead on the Georgia State. 15-0, New Hampshire has jumped out to a big lead on Georgia Southern. Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy as we play this one at Legion Field in Birmingham. This game's supposed to be a home game for Georgia Southern, but moved here to Birmingham in advance of the storm hurricane Irma, which is making its way through the southeast United States, expected to make landfall in the state of Florida here in the next 24 hours. Elman will kick off, and this kick will be taken by Campbell at the two-yard line. And Campbell comes to the near side again, and Campbell gets tripped up this time. Nice open field tackle at the 20-yard line by Alonzo Adai. And so the Eagles begin their third possession at the 20-yard line. And I tell you what, you know, Sean McDonald told us playing an FBS team really helps them when they go back to the FCS. But Wayne, quite frankly, here in the first 13 minutes of the game, it's Georgia Southern that looks like the FCS team right now. Yeah, Georgia Southern, uh, who's only in their fifth year, fourth, fifth year being on the FBS level. But right now, they're just getting physically beat up front, offense and defensive line. So first and 10 from the Eagles from the 20. Wirtz going to take the shotgun snap. Hands off to Godfrey. First carry of the afternoon for DeMarcus Godfrey. He does have no place to run. DeAndre Drummond Myrie making the stop from the safety position. Picked up about four on the play for Godfrey. Fifth year senior out of Sharpsburg, Georgia, in the Atlanta area, East Coweta High School. And what you have to start thinking is about their confidence and their focus uh, with this game being moved here to Birmingham is Georgia Sutton. Wirtz going to fire to the outside, incomplete. Malik Henry was the intended target. The corner Isaiah Perkins over there to make sure he didn't hold on to it. Now it's going to be third down. Trying to get the ball on the perimeter. That's where they like to throw the ball. Uh, it's kind of like an extended pass right there. Wirtz just off target a little bit. Um, hopefully uh, they can get this run game where they can get to what they like to do, third and short. Right now they're creating too many third and longs. Third down and six from the 24. Wirtz going to run option here to the near side, and he picks up the first down at the 31-yard line. Tackle made by the tackle, Rick Holt, but they'll move the sticks. That's the second third down conversion for the Eagles in this quarter. And a big first down because this defense of Georgia Southern has been on this field a lot already in this first quarter. So they need to take a little time off the clock, let them rest, try to get to at least the second quarter before they have to punt. Yeah, exactly. They didn't need to give up field position again if they had to punt deep in this own end. Works comes to the near side again. This time he's going to go down shy of the 30-yard line at the 29. Jaywan Horton, the defensive end there to smother him. A loss of two on the play. And we've seen uh, it's like the third or fourth play uh, this first quarter where this offense just seems like one player is doing something else. The communication the assignments, they're not on the same page mm -hmm. right now. That's one of the things that uh, Tyson Summers talked with us about this week, about having ten guys on the same page and one guy doing something else. And, of course, you can't play football like that. That one guy will screw it up. Handoff goes up the middle, and Ramsby nearly broke it up to the 35-yard line. Actually, that was Fields on the carry as Fields gets it across the 35 just a little bit, and that's the end of the first quarter. So Wesley Fields on the carry on the final play of the first quarter as Georgia Southern seeks to establish some continuity here as they head to the second quarter. It's third and seven when we get back, and the Eagles already down two touchdowns. Third down and seven for Georgia Southern as we start this second quarter. Eagles two of three on their third down conversions in the first. Wirtz rolling to the near side, throwing on the run. Malik Henry makes the catch at the 44. Was he juggling the ball or did he catch it? They're going to say he caught it. That'll be a first down for the Eagles. Nice throw there by Shy Wirtz on the run, on the move, throwing it only where Malik Henry can catch the ball. And as receivers practice all the time, keeping those toes in bounds was number 87, Malik Henry. First catch of the season for Henry. Fresh set of downs for the Eagles. Wirtz going to run it right up the middle and not get very far. Prince Smith 
Jr. making the tackle, the cornerback who a year ago was the CAA Defensive Rookie of the Year. And cornerbacks and safeties trying to stop this option spread run game, uh, they have to make the biggest adjustment. They're not used to having to come up and close out runs as frequently as they are when they take on this type of offense. So second down and 10. Option run here for Wirtz. Going to keep it. Not get very far. Was run down from behind by the defensive end, Brian Carter, whose family, no doubt, in harm's way this week. He's out of Port St. Lucie, Florida, in St. Edwards High School. Going to bring up a third down for the Eagles. And the nice thing you see about this defensive front of New Hampshire is Carter, Solznak, Holt. They all are getting off of blocks and getting downfield uh, and, and not just staying blocked. And that's what you want in your defensive line. Offensive line, you've got to get off of them and get down and cover out. Third down and six for the Eagles. Approaching the 50-yard line. Down two scores already. And a timeout's going to be called by Georgia Southern. So the Eagles burn one here in the opening 90 seconds of the second quarter, trying to convert another big third down when we get back. Thank you. Back in Birmingham, Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy. Third down and six for the Eagles. Opening minute and a half of the second quarter. New Hampshire leading 15 to nothing. Wirtz going to fire a pass complete out here to Henry, and Henry is going to pick up the first down. Second time they've been able to go to Henry out there on the perimeter and pick up a first down. Get it to my big target on the edge. What this offense already is trying to do, establish the edge in the passing game, and Henry right here knows he has to just go get these yards. No faking, just get enough field to convert that third down. Back to live action, and L.A. Ramsby on the carry down to the 39 as he picked up about six on the play. And the one thing that New Hampshire is doing a great job of is first and second down. They're making Georgia Southern have to convert these third and six, third and seven uh, to keep the drive going. Handoff goes to Fields this time, and Wesley Fields dives for the first down at the 33-yard line. Great second effort after he'd been hit by Jaywan Horton, and Fields moves the sticks for the Georgia Southern Eagles. That'll be their sixth first down of the game. And you can see the tempo. The tempo is going. They're getting this tempo to this offense moving. Fields, no running room this time. And that was big number 71, Ryan Sosnick, the defensive tackle that blew up that play and then everybody else joined in. Those are the first sequence of plays where you actually saw tempo to this offense. Right now, they seem to be dragging even with getting the play in. Uh, nobody seems to be. So second down and 10 coming up following that stop at the line of scrimmage by Sosnick, the junior defensive tackle out of Bethel Park, PA. Fifty-six yards rushing now for the Eagles in this ball game. It's Alexander, the H back in motion, going to run out there and block for Wirtz on the edge, and Wirtz gets the first down and more. Tight roping the sideline. Let's see where they're going to say he stepped out. Back at the twenty-two, and that'll be a first down. Nice read there by Wirtz out on the edge. There's a lot of room out there on that edge, going to the the, the wide side of the field pulling it down. He's very dangerous in the open field as a, tail, as a, as a running back that really uh, is playing like a tailback. Just the third Georgia Southern freshman to ever open the season as a starting quarterback joining Charles Bostick in 1991 and of course Hall of Famer Tracy Ham in 1983. Can they keep this tempo going? Uh, they seem to have a good drive and it's predicated on the tempo and where at this defensive front of New Hampshire. So first and 10 from the 22-yard line for the Eagles. As Wayne mentioned, they're starting to get their offense in sync here. Going to toss the ball to Miles Campbell. Campbell slips out of one tackle, jukes, and gets down to the 14-yard line. But there is a flag down on the play after Miles Campbell had picked up eight on that run. Quinlan Dean coming out of nowhere, almost getting uh, the tackle for a loss. That's not enough to get the... The runner down. A great effort by him on that play. Personal foul. 
blocked below the waist. That'll be against Georgia Southern as the call comes from Marshall Lewis, our referee, negates an eight-yard run. And it's a big uh, eight-yard run and now a 15-yard penalty right there. Quinlan Dean is not able to get Miles Campbell down. Sometimes on those backside blocks, he's trying to chop two people to the same person. One is going low, one is going high. Uh, illegal chop block right there. So first and 20 now from the 32-yard line. Curtis Rainey, the center, going to snap it back to Wirtz. Wirtz rolling to the near side. And going to run out of real estate. Gets knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Just a couple of yards gain on that play. Linebacker Jared Keel and Rick Ellison, the strong safety there to team up and make the tackle. Gap protection right there. Everybody's keeping and real just coming out of nowhere, running hard. Uh, everybody's where they're supposed to be in integrity is how you defend a uh, spread option, triple option type offense. Second down and 18 now. Fields lines up next to Wirtz in the backfield. Time in the pocket for Wirtz, fires downfield, got a man open, overthrew him at the five yard line. Malik Henry was open, but Wirtz could not connect. The play was there to be made. Wirtz just a little too high for Henry. Henry coming off the route, breaking to the outside. Wide open, just not able to bring it down. And, and that's what you're trying to do. New Hampshire, you're trying to create third and long. You're trying to make Wirtz have to beat you with his arm. Wirtz was four of eight for eight yards passing and an interception in the opener. He's three for seven now for 22 yards in this game. Wirtz rolls to the left this time, keeps it, and got stopped at the 25-yard line. Alonzo O'Day coming up from the secondary position. And New Hampshire's just doing a good job. You see them just stringing it along, stringing it along. Nobody leading their responsibility, trusting the next man. And that's what you have to have as any good defense, trust that everybody's going to do their job. So on fourth down, this will be a 43-yard kick for Tyler Bass, who missed a 44-yarder last week against Auburn. Snap back. Flynn the holder, ball on its way, and that kick is going to be no good as Tyler Bass misses from 43 yards and Georgia Southern remains scoreless here in Birmingham. New Hampshire going back on offense with a 15 to nothing lead when we get back. First and 10 Wildcats as New Hampshire goes back on offense from their 26-yard line after the 43-yard field goal miss for Georgia Southern. Knight going to dump it off to O'Connor. O'Connor continues to do damage. Moon rides him out of bounds. The New Hampshire coaching staff wants a late hit. They don't get the flag, but they've got to figure out something with O'Connor here. That's his sixth catch already. And this is the best part of this play is Trevor Knight trusting his offensive line. Coach McDonald spoke about how he gets antsy feet and try to make it up with his legs right there. Trusting the O-line, waiting till O'Connor comes clean and dumping him the ball. Nice play, patience by the quarterback, Trevor Knight. And that's where Knight has really grown, uh, his ability to hang in the pocket, play with settled feet, not take off and run. Goodrich going to run it right there, and Goodrich gets stood up at the line of scrimmage. No running room for him on that play. As De La Rosa, the linebacker, was the first guy there, and it's going to be second down. Trevor Knight, 6 of 9 for 88 yards and a touchdown. They really haven't used him much in the running game so far today. Just a couple of carries for four yards. But he's been exactly what uh, I think, uh, you know, Coach McDonald wanted. Uh, also, offensive coordinator Ryan Cardi would want. I mean, he's been a, a guy that's really run the offense very efficiently and effectively for the Wildcats so far. Knight hangs in there. Now going to take off and run and gets dropped. Logan Hunt. With the penetration, drops Knight for a loss back at the 34-yard line. The junior, the big Logan Hunt in the middle, just pushing the pocket, pushing the pocket, empty backfield. Trevor Knight tries to step up, about to take off. 
And when you get those big paws on you, you're going to go to the ground. Uh, nice play there by the nose tackle, Logan Hunt, on the stunt coming back uh, to bring down the quarterback. Brings up a third and 14. New Hampshire two for two on third down conversion so far in this game. Heavy pressure coming, and the ball is going to be incomplete. And a punting situation for the first time for New Hampshire today. Nice initial defense by Georgia Southern creating that third and long. First time they may put a lot of pressure on uh, Trevor Knight, making him to make the throw right there, just not coming up. Receivers on the different page than Trevor Knight. Pednoff going to kick. They've got three kickers that they kind of rotate with Elman, Pednoff, and Sanborn sharing the place kicking and punting duties. Pednoff standing at the 20-yard line to kick with Campbell back at the 30. Heavy rush, and Pednoff booms it out of there. Campbell's going to take it at the 31-yard line. Dances and picks up nine yards on the return, but a late flag comes out. Probably going to negate what was a pretty good effort there by Miles Campbell. Nice effort by Miles Campbell early on, uh, making a big play on the kickoff. And penalties are starting to affect both teams now in this game as this game wears on. Blocking the back on Georgia Southern. So that'll be the second official penalty on the Eagles. They've also had a holding call that was declined. So that's going to push them back to the 29-yard line. Georgia Southern with 95 yards of total offense so far in this game to the Wildcats 134. Georgia Southern breakdown, 73 rushing and 22 passing. Can they find that rhythm again? They start getting some tempo in that last set of drives. Ramsby runs it right into the teeth of the defense. Very short gain and another flag out, it looks like, at the 50-yard line. Way back, about 30 yards beyond the line of scrimmage, or is that just something yellow sitting on the sideline? Sideline warning. Yeah, there you go. It's a sideline warning against, uh, or is it going to be a penalty? I think it should just be a warning. That's the first time we've seen that, so it's a warning on New Hampshire. Where's the get-back coach when you yeah. need him, Matt? <laughs> Not getting them back. <laughs> Second down now. Words with the play clock running down, bounces out of his hands, and he's going to take a loss back at the 21-yard line. Quinlan Dean, the linebacker, got in there and made sure that he did not advance, but it was a high snap. I don't know whether he took his eyes off the ball or the sun got in his eyes or whatever. Uh, it was a high snap, but it bounced up in the air and it immediately doomed the play. And that's that rhythm, having your offensive line having to be in that stance that long, the center. Uh, as you can see, Shy Wirtz looking to the sideline, trying to process everything. He is a freshman. This is his second game. Uh, sometimes you can put that line in that center in that position so long. Uh, bad snap, just uh, getting off their timing right now with penalties and uh, missed assignments. Third and 16 now. Wirtz wants to throw. Now going to be flushed out of the pocket. Wirtz right up the middle, gets run down at the 35-yard line. Going to be short of the first down, and so a likely punting situation for the Eagles here from their own end. Success of this New Hampshire defense has been... Basically, go out, win first and second down, create third and long, and Georgia Southern is not adapt of having to consistently make third and six plus. Flynn standing at his 20 yard line to kick. Wildcats DC John Lyons told us you got to fit your gaps and hold up on the perimeter in order to be successful against this Georgia Southern offense. They've done that so far today. Flynn, end over end kick. Horn calls fair catch, makes it at the 26-yard line, and that's where the Wildcats will go back on offense with five minutes and 12 seconds to play here in the first half. So, partner, you played a lot of big games in this building uh, when you were a member of the Auburn Tigers, the Iron Bowl. You played it every year here against the Alabama Crimson Tide. What is your best memory 
of here. Getting on the bus and heading back home to Auburn? Oh, uh, yeah. It was, <laughs> <laughs> it was leaving here with my head <laughs> attached. Uh, some great games. Uh, definitely unbiased, if you ask me, the greatest rivalry in college football right. is the Iron Bowl. Uh, and coming here, what they call the neutral site. Never seemed like it really was that <laughs> neutral if you're an Auburn Tiger. You were pretty much stuck in neutral when you came here and played Alabama. Knight throws. That's complete to Donovan at the 30-yard line as they pick up four on that play. First time they've thrown the ball to Rory Donovan. And again, the Wildcats playing without one of their top wide receivers, Malik Love, who stayed back in Durham, New Hampshire with a hamstring injury, but it hasn't impacted their offense much today. And Trevor Knight is just making good decisions as you watch him play. He's not trying to run the ball like he was last week, moving around the pocket and finding people down the field to throw to. Let's see if he caught Georgia Southern offside there. That's why he took a knee directly on that snap. Yep, and it is a five-yard markoff, so that'll put the ball at the 35 and bring up a second down and one. And how to get a defensive coordinator great hair right there. Uh, jumping offside when the quarterback is in the gun position uh, should never happen for an interior lineman. So second down and one, ball at the 35-yard line. Handoff goes to Gray, gaping hole. Gray across the 50, the 40, cut back, and finally brought to the ground by Baldry at the 19-yard line. Huge gain for Evan Gray. Early in the first quarter, we saw... Uh, Gray and Goodrich make a lot of big yards right up the middle of the defense. Uh, Georgia Southern had tightened it up there for a while, and right there, Gray uh, just showing that he does have enough speed to punish you. Uh, stiff arm there at the end, big play for this offense. So first and ten, the Wildcats replacing one of their top running backs from a year ago, Dalton Crossan who had 1,977 all-purpose yards a year ago. But Coach McDonald confident the Perry's got here this year can get the job done. Throws to the end zone, and it is caught for a touchdown. What a catch. And it's that guy again, Neil O'Connor, with his seventh catch of the ball game and his second touchdown. Neil O'Connor, the lunch pail. I'll play any position at any time and do anything you need type player. And what defensive a, holding against Georgia Southern. The touchdown will stand. Right here, over the shoulder, dropping it in. It's Trevor Knight, and what concentration catching the ball right here. Some receivers, they see the penalty flag, and they kind of give up right there, just finishing the play. Elman's on to try this PAT after Pedinoff put the last one through. Okay. All right, then let's go out there and finish. And it's 22 to nothing. Wow, what a performance by New Hampshire today. They've got Georgia Southern pushed back against the wall. Late in the. New Hampshire with a three play 74 yard drive to take a 22 nothing lead now on Georgia Southern. 18 yard touchdown pass to Neil O'Connor. Watching this game, I must say, Matt, you have to be impressed. The one place you thought Georgia Southern had the advantage was their defensive front, that they would be able to be stout. But New Hampshire, even though Trevor Knight and Will O'Connor is dominating, the offensive line is pushing Georgia Southern around. Ramsby takes the kick at the 14-yard line, and Ramsey gets tackled by Ellison at the 20 or 32, pardon me, and that's where the Eagles go back on offense with 340 to play. How important is it for the Eagles to put something together here and get some points on the board and some positive momentum heading into the locker room? They have to get some kind of tempo going. That is, that's their biggest negative so far in this first half. They don't seem to be able to have a positive play uh, followed up by another positive play. Why do you think that's the case? Uh, well, we talked about focus in the beginning of them being moved here. Uh, one thing that seems to be they m have been caught off of guard with is New Hampshire's physical play up front. Offensive and defensive lines are battling. They're making plays, and they're making holes for their running back. So the ball is spotted at the 38, first and 10. Wirtz remains in there at quarterback. Richardson, the H-back, lines up in front of him off to the right. 
Handoff. Garrett with his first carry. Monteo Garrett, his first carry as a Georgia Southern Eagle. Picks up seven on the play up to the 45. And if you're New Hampshire, the one thing you come in this game with the mindset, if we want to beat this team, we need to do just what we do. Create second and third and long and get up on the scoreboard to make them have to feel the pressure of throwing. Wirtz runs option, tosses to Garrett. Garrett has the first down, gets knocked out of bounds at the 50-yard line. So Garrett gets his first two carries as a Georgia Southern Eagle and moves the sticks. Right here, Wirtz, proper read, going down the line, gap integrity. Nice pitch, Garrett getting up field, making that first down. First two carries of this season for the fourth-year junior out of Munford High School in Talladega, Alabama. Wirtz, heavy rush, going to take a sack. Back at the 40-yard line as Rick Holt gets to him, his second sack of the season. New Hampshire's defensive line all day long been playing great with their hands. And what I mean by that, when you have defensive tackles that are able to come off blocks and keep the quarterback in check when he takes off the run. Right here you see Hope simple, pushing the pocket, using his hands, and exploiting his athletic ability over the big guard right there, Jeremiah Cobra. Yeah, went right by their most veteran and experienced right guard, making his 23rd start here today. Wirtz slings it out there to Mashad, and Mashad across the 40 to the 47-yard line. The ball was out. Mark Mashad making the catch, and Mashad gets the ball to the 47-yard line. We'll take a replay. The New Hampshire players were arguing that the ball had come out. Just nice pitch and catch right there. Nice move by Mark Mashad to get a couple of extra yards, and now big third and long again for Georgia Southern. Handoff goes to field. He will not pick up the first down as he gets stopped at the 42. With two minutes to play in the half, do you go for it here? Well, your offense has a little rhythm going. You, you, you don't want to put your defense back out there. You cross midfield. I would go for a nice call here uh, by Tyson Summer. Going for it on fourth and three, and Fields tries to get to the outside, and Fields going to be close to the first down as he gets tackled at the 39. Yes. Prince Smith Jr. in on that tackle for the Wildcats. And this is all effort by, by Wesley Fields. Nothing in the middle, trying to get to the edge. With number 95, Joshua. Camilla grabbing him, almost a little face mask there, but just enough effort by Wesley Fields to get the first down. First and 10 from the 39-yard line as they pick up the first down. Now Campbell goes in motion. Handoff goes to Ramsby, and Ramsby down to the 35-yard line. Josh Kenya making the stop. Kenya's a Georgia kid playing for New Hampshire, played at Cambridge High School in Milton, Georgia, which is right there in the Atlanta area. He made that tackle, second down and six. Works, fires to the near side, overshoots his man. Intended target right there was OB Fortune, and it's going to be third down. Fortune wide open, Works just missing him, and, and that's once again is what you want to make. Shy works do you want to make him have to drop and throw the ball from the pocket? Uh, he's uh, not that tall, and that's why you see him throwing a lot of high balls on his release. Third down and six from the 35. Works fires low, broken up. Nice play by the corner, Isaiah Perkins. And now it's going to be fourth down. And if you're Tyson Summers, you, you went for it the last. Uh, time you might as well roll the dice again. You don't want to put your defense back out here uh, a little lengthy for a field goal try You won't don't want to give New Hampshire any more momentum going in this game and now Georgia Southern has used a timeout with 40 seconds remaining here in the first half Stick around. Coming up at halftime, we'll talk to Eagles Athletics Director Dom Kleinlein. He'll kind of take us through the whole scenario and how this developed, that they ended up playing this game at Legion Field with Hurricane Irma looming 
out there in the Caribbean. We'll also check out the scoreboard in the Sun Belt and Colonial, and we'll have first half stats and highlights as well. 22 to nothing. New Hampshire leading Georgia Southern in the second ever meeting between these two teams. Very impressive display of defense by this New Hampshire team. They, they have done just what you want to do against a running offense and once again creating a situation where Shy Works has to make a big play in conversion. Fourth down and six. Words time batted down at the line of scrimmage. That was Sosnack. The defensive tackle got his hand on it and swatted it down as it was going through the passing lane. And that's what you want to do again to a 5'11 quarterback. You want to push the pocket and anticipate when he's going to release the ball and get your hands up. And you made a great point at 5'11 words. It's hard for him to pass over the top of that line of scrimmage. That's why so many of the passes have been out there on the edge. And you see why it's hard for him to pass over the top of the line of the scrimmage. It gets batted down like it did right there. Victory formation here to end this first half as Knight will take a knee. And the Wildcats are content to take a 22-0 lead to the locker room. Both sides of the ball for New Hampshire have come out and executed very well. You haven't seen any missed assignments, no big penalties by them. Uh, they've come on this road trip focused and knowing what they need to do to defeat this Georgia Southern uh, Eagle team. And I think you made a really good point when we talked about this in the open. I'm not trying to make excuses for Georgia Southern, but, uh, you know, for New Hampshire, this was a road game regardless. They were either they were coming to Statesboro and then, oh, change of plans, we're going to Birmingham. For Georgia Southern, that was the big upheaval. And I don't know whether that has impacted them or not here in the first half, but they have simply been outplayed by New Hampshire in the first two quarters. Right now they seem like they're sleepwalking, and Coach Summers doing halftime is going to have to get them motivated on both sides. 22-0 New Hampshire as we head to the locker room. When we come back, we'll talk to Eagles Athletics Director Tom Kleinline as halftime starts here at Legion Field in just a moment. Welcome to the Capital One Halftime Report. And welcome back to Legion Field Halftime. New Hampshire with a 22 to nothing lead on Georgia Southern. I'm Matt Stewart, joined by Eagles Athletics Director Tom Kleinline. I know a disappointing first half for you guys. It's been a very hectic week for your entire team just to get here to Birmingham. Kind of take us through the scenario by which this all transpired, that you ended up moving your home game from Statesboro to Birmingham. Yeah, it all started kind of on Monday as we were watching the storm like everybody else in the country, and uh, it became more of a possibility that either we were going to get affected by the storm or we were going to get affected by having a stage for, you know, with FEMA and all those things to help with the storm. So we started looking at the possibilities of moving the game on Monday and uh, reached out to Mark Ingram at uh, UAB, and, you know, he's absolutely accommodating and just said, hey, bring them on up here and we'll figure it out when we get up here. So uh, it's been a great, great, great uh, partnership between uh, UAB and Georgia Southern. I know it's not just your football team either. It's all of your fall sports have kind of uh, uh, encamped here in Birmingham. Yeah, we've got uh, men's and women's soccer. We've got volleyball up here. We've got swimming up here. And so we've, we're using UAB facilities. We're using Sanford facilities. We've even reached out to uh, Birmingham Southern. So it's really a, a, a very collaborative effort with the uh, city of Birmingham to try to help us out. Yeah, it would have been very difficult even with the weather. The storm, of course, has not come ashore yet. But even with the storm having not yet come ashore, it would have been very difficult, if not impossible, to hold a game at Paulson Stadium today because I-16 has been shut down basically for west-only traffic. Yeah, they, they, they turned the traffic around and uh, evacuated out of Savannah. Now, we, we did get some good news late this afternoon that they've actually flipped that back around now and they're letting people uh, – stay in savannah at certain parts of the city so just you know you never know whether it's going to be the storm or whether it's going to be you know the ability to stage and and have all those agencies that are helping out with the storm use your facilities too. exactly and even though you get that good news today you couldn't wait until today to decide whether you're going to play the game in statesboro or play it in birmingham yeah big challenge that was the you know the timing of the whole thing is at some point you have to pull the trigger if this is going to be a, f a possibility and like i said city of birmingham has been gracious uh, sheridan hotel is, is housed uh 
number of our student athletes to DoubleTree, the new Holiday Inn that just opened up. So everybody's been really, really helpful. Yeah, the other thing that I didn't even realize until I was talking to Coach Summers this week is that Statesboro is the big staging ground for all of the emergency emergency personnel in in the southeast portion of the state of Georgia. So uh, very difficult just to you know run a school and have operations going on in Statesboro when you have a storm going on. Simply from the standpoint of all the emergency personnel using your campus your facilities for their purposes yeah you know we're conveniently located right on 16 995 so we can get you know north and south east and west very quickly so that's why they utilize our facility and then that was a big issue you know with uh, police departments and state troopers and all the other people housing and 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 kind of buttoned down for the for the week in our place to see see how they can help out with the storm well, I mean, what's the plan for the rest of the week? I know you guys are going to be here a couple of days, and you're here with the team, and so uh, it's not like after this game you get get to pack up and go back home. No, we're going to be here for a while. Uh, you know, I'm watching the weather like everybody else, and I've noticed that thing started to take a little little bit of a westward turn, and so we'll kind of sit right here, and as I get reports, I'm in contact with the governor's office and with Dr. Aber, our president, back on campus, and as it looks like it's more comfortable or maybe more suitable for us to move back, we'll start to think about when we can do that. And I know this isn't anything I mean uh, that you're thinking about when you make this decision because you're making the decision for the safety of the athletes for the state safety of everybody involved any fans that might be coming to the game but this is a pretty big hit for you guys because this is a home game this was your home opener and you lose that yeah it was a tough deal we had a lot of things planned obviously we're going to honor Adrian Peterson who was going to the College Football Hall of Fame this year we'll move that to a later date we're going to do military appreciation so we'll move that to a later date and uh, any Saturday and in, in, in Statesboro is a big Saturday for the community when we have our fans come and so that's always a tough deal especially with the limited number of home games we have this year but at the end of the day in order for this game to get uh, played we had to make the decision early on yeah leaves you with only four home dates one of those the next home date is a Wednesday game mm -hmm. nationally televised game I know you're happy about the national television but it's a Wednesday night against Arkansas State it's only three Saturday home dates this year yeah that's a, again that's a little bit of a challenge for our fan base but uh, hopefully uh, they they kind of understand about the scenario that led us to make this decision and uh, hopefully everything turns out for the best. Well, Tom, thanks for being with us. I know it's a disappointing first half, but you've done a heck of a job just to make sure that we even had a game today, so we appreciate that. I appreciate it. And once again, thanks to everybody in the city of Birmingham, the mayor and Mark Ingram and uh, New uh, Martin Newton down at Sanford and all the other institutions that have helped us out. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Halftime here in Birmingham. It's New Hampshire with a 22 to nothing lead. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. And welcome back to Legion Field in Birmingham, where the displaced New Hampshire Wildcats and Georgia Southern Eagles have a 22-0 ball game going on. Wildcats out of the FCS, ranked number 12 in the nation, with the big lead on the Eagles of FBS. And here's a look at all the games that have been impacted by Hurricane Irma. Uh, ULM at Florida State, that has been canceled, as did Northern Colorado and Florida, Memphis and UCF, Miami at Arkansas State also canceled. USF at UConn, those were games played in other places other than Florida, but canceled because the teams had concerns about getting there, not getting back, or family members left behind. Uh, here uh, yesterday, last night, FI, FIU beat Alcorn State 17 to 10 right here at Legion Field, Charleston Southern. South Carolina State has been postponed, and, of course, the game that you're watching right now moved to Birmingham. Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy, and, Wayne, you are very experienced. I mean, perhaps more than most humans in the world <laughs> when it comes to hurricanes and displacements. You were a member of the New Orleans Saints when Hurricane Katrina came through. You left for a road trip and didn't make it back home for eight months. Georgia Southern team, where you pack a bag thinking you're going to be going for four or five days, and the next thing you know, it's a new year when you get back to the city. Katrina definitely changed the landscape of how we approach these storms. I think between Katrina, Harvey, Sandy, and now Irma, we're just trying to make sure that we get people out of the way, and the best way, especially with college sports, is just to cancel the game, 
let everybody go where it needs to go and not block up the highways. Yeah, and I, I think it's been unfortunate. We've seen some criticism of Miami because they didn't play their game at Arkansas State, and certainly Miami could have gotten there. But I think people lose sight of the fact that just because a team can get there to play a football game doesn't necessarily mean that's the best thing to do because – those football coaches, those football players, they have family be- left behind. They've got other things on their mind. they got more important things on their mind. Especially like states like Florida and Georgia and Louisiana where you have a lot of great high school football, and those players go to those schools. Yeah. So you're talking about a Miami team. If you go down the roster, you'll find a third, if not half of that team, is somewhere from that Dade, Broward County area. So you want to make sure those kids can take care of their families and their needs. It's halftime here at Legion Field, where New Hampshire has a 22 to nothing. Welcome back to the Capital One Halftime Report. All right, let's take a look at this play that may have an impact on your Capital One fan vote. The incredible defense of the Alabama Crimson Tide in their victory against Florida State at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta as Alabama retained the number one ranking in the nation. And don't forget to go to ESPN.com or the Sports Center Facebook page on Tuesday to give your Capital One fan vote. Uh, Larry, you got to get those burgers off the grill. Doug Flutie? Who threw the Hail Larry? You mean a Hail Mary? Tomato, potato, man. Those are two different words. Let's go, Dr. Pepper. Let's go. And here's a look at today's Campus Moment brought to you by Dr. Pepper. And you see the Georgia Southern fans that got out of town, got out ahead of Hurricane Irma, made it over here to Birmingham to watch the Georgia Southern Eagles play today. Unfortunately for the Eagles and their fans, it's not been a great day for them. New Hampshire has put it to Georgia Southern here. As we start the third quarter, the opening kickoff was a touchback. So the Wildcats will start at their own 25-yard line. O'Connor goes in motion behind the line. He's been deadly all day. They run a tunnel screen to him. This time, they read it well, and the linebacker, Todd Bradley, drops him for a loss. Big time open field tackle there by Bradley on probably the most dangerous receiver on the field today. So far, Neil O'Connor coming up. That's the way you come up, make a tackle. Uh, Georgia Southern needs to start getting a couple of three and outs uh, to give their offense a short field. That was the eighth reception for O'Connor. Nine completions for Knight, eight to O'Connor and one to Donovan. Second down and 15. Keeper by Knight. Haven't seen much of that today. De La Rosa makes the tackle. And it's going to be third down as we take a look at the first half stats and some domination there by New Hampshire. 202 total yards, and the one turnover, of course, was also costly for the Eagles. And the passing yards is the biggest difference. When you go down the stat sheet, Georgia Southern uh, leads in some of the even time of possession. But the passing yard, Trevor Knight hitting Neil O'Connor a couple of times has been the biggest difference in this game. O'Connor, eight catches for 101 today. Knight going to step up and run. Makes a man miss, picks up the first down. Gets more than that. Out to the 40, across the 50. Knight still on his feet and steps out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Huge run by Trevor Knight. First time today we've seen him use his legs as a real weapon. And big time blocking down the field by Donald Goodrich. Right here in the open field, Trevor Knight faking everybody out, getting to the edge. His tailback's getting in front of him. Uh, to keep everybody out of him and doing the smart thing at the tail end. Once he sees he's run out of yard, he's getting out of bounds. So first and ten, they really like for Knight to stay in the pocket, but they don't like to take away of his, his improvisation as well because he can make things happen just like that. 
Gray on the carry. And nothing doing for Evan Gray as he picks up just about one yard on the play. And if you're Georgia Southern, you have to be pulling your hair out. You got him what you wanted, third and long. And then Trevor Knight doing the thing we knew he could do, which is move around and run the ball. But so far in this game, really doing it more with his passing ability. Yeah, it was funny when we were talking to Sean McDonald, their head coach. He said, we wanted to be patient, stand there in the pocket. But at the same time, we want him to take off because he, some of his best plays happen when things break down. Yeah, you don't want to stifle him where he forgets that he can make those type of big plays. Second down, handoff goes to Gray again. Big hole for Gray, off tackle, and a first down for Gray as Joshua Moon, or actually Baldry, makes the stop at the 20, and Baldry gets hurt on the play. So they hate to see that because Joshua Moon got hurt last week, although he's playing today, and now Baldry's been hurt at the 20-yard line. Penalty about to. And a holding call on New Hampshire is going to negate that run anyway. Timeout on the field. Well, they brought out the emergency cart and the flat board for Jay Baldry. The, I mean, the good news is that we saw Baldry kicking his legs and moving his arms. We believe uh, the way the tackle was made, we're probably looking at some kind of a neck or shoulder injury here. That His head kind of got jammed back into his shoulders when he makes that tackle. And right there at the tail end, uh, it shows you the hard job of making tackles in the open field. You... You're just so low in the angle of your head running into your thigh, and it's a lot of power coming when that leg drives up, especially by big running backs like that. Uh, it forces your neck back, and, and that's what when it creates what we call a stinger, when your neck kind of goes back at that wrong angle. So Baldry, they get him on the flat board, and they'll cart him off the field. And again, the good news in this situation is that we did see him kicking his arms and moving his moving his legs as well. So kicking his legs and moving his arms after the uh, point of the impact. And so while they continue to work on Jay Baldry, we'll take another time out here early. They continue to work on Jay Baldry at the 20-yard line. And while they continue to do so, let's update you on scores around the uh, conferences for these two teams in the Colonial Athletic Association today. Towson was beaten badly by Maryland, 63-17. Richmond, who's one of the top four picks in the conference this year, 20-17 winner at Colgate. Stony Brook defeated Rhode Island, 35-18. It was Albany over Morgan State, 26-0. And Elon, a 34-31 victory over Furman today. Also, uh, Maine defeated Bryan 43-5. Virginia Tech leading Delaware 17-0 at halftime. Uh, Villanova trailing Temple 10-0 at halftime. And uh, James Madison will kick off at, uh, well, getting ready to kick off here shortly against East Tennessee State, as is uh, William & Mary and Norfolk State as well. In the Sun Belt, uh, Texas State on the road at Colorado, losing 34 uh, 37 to 3 right now. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns at Tulsa today. They're down 24 17. That's in the second quarter. App State with a 45 0 lead on Savannah State at halftime. Troy playing host to Alabama State today. Idaho entertaining UNLV, the team that uh, was the victim of that huge uh, upset <laughs> by Howard last week. And Kalen uh, Newton. Cam's little brother made national news. New Mexico State's at New Mexico in the big uh, Rio Grande rivalry. ULM and Florida State, that was canceled, as was Arkansas State and Miami canceled as well. So things have come to a halt here with Jay Bowdry being treated at the 20-yard line, taking great precaution with his injury after he'd made the tackle on Evan Gray, a first down run by Evan Gray that was subsequently wiped out by a holding call. How difficult is this, you know, as a football player when it's 
one of your teammates who goes down like this and play comes to a halt, everything kind of grinds to a halt, and you're worried about him, but you also have to – you also know that once this is taken care of, you've got to get back out there and play. Well, as players, you, you understand this is how, you know, how the process goes. Uh, even when you're in practice and, and somebody might pull up, they just move the drill down. So it's like you still got to refocus, and, and that's where that mental toughness comes in. That's when coaches talk about having veteran teams. Uh, you know there's nothing you can do to control uh, one of your teammates' injury. As me and you alluded to, it was great to see him moving so you know the paralysis is not there. Uh, and jamming your neck if, if you play football, other than probably the position of punter or kicker, you've had something like this, and it's just good to see them taking the time that they need to to get him off the field because uh, in my day, as we talked about, Matt, uh, y- your whole instinct was to jump up and try to run to the sideline, and you never know if you're going to aggravate what's going on. So Jay Baldry, the – Free safety for the Georgia Southern Eagles, who had a career-high 12 tackles last week in their ball game at Auburn, including an interception down, and they've got him on the straight board right now. Here's another look at his injury at the end of the play and his tackle on Evan Gray. And the thing about that, uh, for you have never been in this position, you're catching uh, Evan Gray all his weight. You're trying to get low. You know, you know if you're Bowdry, how big and strong of a runner he is. So you're trying to get him in the leg area to bring him down. And sometimes you catch that weight. And uh, no matter how much you work out your neck in the locker room, when 220 pounds hits you, it's very effective. Bowdry was their leading tackler, is their leading tackler right now today. He's got four total tackles, four solo tackles, including the one right here that has apparently injured him as the Georgia Southern fans and the New Hampshire fans, for that matter, ride to their feet and give him an ovation as they're getting close to being able to put him in the back of that cart and take him to a local hospital for further test observation. And we'll try to get you any kind of uh, update that we're able to get you before this game is over. And you see all of his... Defensive teammates are coming out there to, in fact, the entire team now coming out on the field as he is being moved into the cart. And you can even see, if you look over at the New Hampshire uh, sideline, Evan Gray is clapping his hands. Uh, He's right there on the 50-yard line. You can see that he's very attentive to, uh, because as a competitor, uh, we all want to win, but we never want to win at the expense of hurting someone. Um, and usually that guy that does it, he, he lives that long dream of hurting you uh, just as much as you do. Yeah. You see the players coming by to give Jay Baldry their best and wish him a speedy recovery. You can see the protective gear that, that they now have around the heck, uh, the head and the neck for Jay Baldry right there. So certainly we pray for the best for Jay Baldry as they take him off the field. And you can hear the big ovation that's coming from that side of the stadium as the cart will disappear into the tunnel. Now who can get refocused, who can draw energy, uh, especially if you're Georgia Southern, you're down three scores. You've got to get something going here to get back into this game. Second down and 18. Knight with time. Drag route across the middle. Catch is made. And out of bounds by Nick Lorden, his first catch of the day, as he gets back close to the original line of scrimmage. And that's some of that patience that we spoke about with Trevor Knight. Uh, in times past, he would take that and try to use his feet right there, just working the pocket, letting something come open, dumping it out, taking the physicality off of his body of having to run the ball and get the ball and get some rhythm to the receiving core. Well, look at this lineup. Three men lined up on the offensive line. They throw it out there to O'Connor. and O'Connor, another trick play here. 
third trick play we've seen them run here today. This one not as effective, and it's going to be fourth down. And that puts a lot of pressure on your offensive line and everybody to make sure they're lined up right if you're on the ball, if you're off the ball. Uh, so to be running these kind of plays, especially, uh, you definitely better be up in the scoreboard, Matt. <laughs> well, fourth down, let's see what they do here. This would be a 52-yard kick if they tried that. Looks like they're going to punt instead as they bring number 10, Drew Sanborn, out to punt. He's standing at the 50-yard line, and Miles Campbell will run on the field for Georgia Southern to field it. And I think this is a great call by Sean McDonald. Uh, Georgia Southern's offense hasn't done anything for you to need to give them a short field. And did the play clock run out? Delay game. It is a delay of game. And that'll give Sanborn a little extra room to try to place this ball down inside the 20-yard line. You're, you're up three scores on a, an offense that's really built to run the ball. You want to consistently keep making them have to go 70, 80 yards when you can. Uh, right here, look for him uh, to try to kick this ball, angle this ball out of bounds. Punted twice last week in their victory over Maine for 27 yards. Kicks it inside the 10 and into the end zone. It's caught <laughs> on the fly. Nice coverage on the play, actually. Top, top, yeah. But the you ball will come out on the touchback yeah, to the 20-yard line. Thanks, what a great job on coverage by Cody Rothwell to catch that ball in the air. <laughs> and the best part of that is he realized that he didn't have a teammate around him. If he throws that ball in the field, a Georgia Southern player can pick it up. And even wherever he gets, if he fumbles the ball, he can try to return it right there, knowing none of his players is around, just feel the ball and make them go to long field. So the Eagles on offense still trying to get something going here. They've been shut out. In fact, the offense for the Eagles is yet to score a touchdown this season as Fields takes that pitch. And Ellison, who's been their leading tackler today, makes the stop. That's tackle number six for Rick Ellison, the strong safety. No offensive touchdown. Their only touchdown here so far this season, Wayne, was that scoop and score by Tamarcio Reese last week against uh, Auburn on the defense for the Eagles. And a nice play there by Rick Ellison. Taking on the, the right tackle, Drew Wilson, and shugging him off with his hands and making that tackle. Second down and 10. Wirtz pitches to Ramsby to the short side. Not a whole lot of running room out there as Kenya makes the stop for the Wildcats. And it's going to be third down. New Hampshire very disciplined. As you see this play progress, everybody's holding their gap. Nobody's overrunning. They're letting Wirtz pitch the ball, staying in their lane, and creating once again a third and long for Wirtz to have to use his arm uh, to try to convert. Eagles are 6 of 10 on their third down conversions today. They've been good at that. They just haven't been able to sustain drives and make points. Wirtz rolling this way, going to run it, and Wirtz is not going to pick up the first down. Once again, Rick Holt coming from that deep sense of tackle position, just covering out, playing hard, playing down the line uh, to catch this play from the back. If he doesn't make this play, uh, Shy Works would have gotten that first down. So fourth down and three, and the Eagles again in a punting situation. Just not a whole lot of life in that Eagles offense as they trudge off the field. Yeah, they, they, they can make a positive, and, and when I say about momentum is following a good play with a good play. Georgia Southern has not been able to do that today on offense. Flynn will kick. Wobbly kick. Horn comes up to field it at the 43-yard line. Evan Horn across midfield. Gutsy play by Evan Horn to field that thing on the fly, and it turns into positive yards for the Wildcats, and they'll start on the Eagles side of the 50. John McDonald is pulling his hair out on that kind of play. You have to really, really trust your return guy to be able to know when he can make the play and when he can't. You really, uh, once you send him out there, you just have to hold your breath and hope he make the right decision. Well, they really do like Horn. In fact, that's the reason he's back there because they trust his decision making. There, he took the risk. He felt the risk was worth it, and it gets some positive yards to the 48. Now, Knight rolling to his right, throwing downfield, and nearly intercepted by Monquavian Brinson. And a flag out as well. If Brinson had held on, that would have been another defensive score for the I Eagles. Think, <laughs> I think we would have been striking up the band for Georgia Southern. 
the play was there to be made by Brinson. He just dropped the ball. And you say that figuratively speaking because the band isn't here today. There are no band, no cheerleaders. You know, it's uh, they were all left to try to get out of town there in Statesboro, but it's kind of a skeleton crew here for Georgia Southern from that regard. They didn't have all the trappings that you typically have with a college football game. Wow, I didn't see that, and they didn't give a number. Marshall Lewis did not give a number on the potential targeting call. We'll see if we can catch it on the replay. Sprint out here by Trevor Knight, trying to find something to come in in focus to throw to, taking the risk that he could get it in the gap. Brinson comes out of nowhere, oh, there it is. just drops the interception. And there was the targeting call against R.J. Murray, the safety, watching the impact with the wide receiver at the end of the play right there. That's the targeting call. That's where they dropped the flag on the receiver, Nick Lorden. Yeah, I don't think I don't, that's I don't think that's going to be targeting. Yeah, he, did, he didn't get his helmet in there. Seems like he just hit him in the shoulder, in the in the side. He didn't leave his feet, as you can see in the replay. Which is part of the targeting call, but he did not launch and use his helmet or the crown of his helmet as a weapon here. But you did mention that he did leave his feet, which is also part of the targeting call right there. That's. I, it looks like it's his shoulder. I don't know that I, th and you know, we're going to take a look at this thing, and the replay officials are looking at it right now. That's Terry Walters, our replay official. And, of course, new in the Sun Belt this year, very similar to the SEC. They have a command center right here in Birmingham. They share that with the Southeastern Conference so that the, there's an extra set of eyes beyond just the on-site replay official taking a look at every play. See, I'm with you, Matt. I don't, I don't see enough right there to hold this call up for targeting. Which is good. I, I love the targeting rule. I love the fact that they will go back and look at this, and hopefully they'll allow R.J. Murray to stay in the game because I don't believe this is an infraction worthy of the targeting ejection. But that's not up to me. I don't see any helmet hitting the receiver. Murray did not jump off the ground and launch himself into him. At best, maybe you could get a, a late hit, yeah. but I, I don't see targeting enough to throw a player out the game, and as we always speak about, which means he'd be out in the first half of the next game. Here's the call from the field. A great job by the officials. That's what I love about the college football replay rule. They're pretty efficient and speedy at getting the call in and in this case they make the right call too and it seems as as the years pass since they put this rule in they really take their time mm -hmm. and understand the gravity if i make this call against yeah, the team exactly yeah i mean this, I mean, this is going to cost the team and the kid you know into the next game we need to get this right especially for georgia southern having joshua moon banged up and jay bowles you're just taking off the field at the safety position yeah in fact uh, right now freeman and murray are their two safeties out on the field right now. Nothing doing. Goodrich gets smothered at the line of scrimmage. Again, good activity up front for the Eagles. Deshaun Cooper, the fourth-year junior, playing in his second game with the Eagles, making that tackle right there, and it's going to be third down and long. Big play for Georgia Southern. Uh, they really need to start getting this ball back to their offense. You can see New Hampshire is very comfortable just taking time off this clock trying to execute uh, third and long this is what you work on those first two downs for to create third and long Knight has a pocket throws and trying to get the ball to O'Connor for one of the rare times today they don't connect and it's going to be fourth down as the shadows are starting to creep across the field here at historic Legion Field Trevor Knight just missing his target right there Little O'Connor uh, coming out of the back end on the crossing route. And Trevor Knight just not able to get in the ball. Let's see who will punt this time. It's going to be Pedinoff this time for the Wildcats. 
I thought it was interesting. We talked to Coach McDonald about that. Was Coach, how do you decide who's going to kick here? He goes, I look into their eyes. <laughs> so Pedinoff had the right look this time. That's really more on the field goal kicking. Great job by Pedinoff to drop it dead inside the 10-yard line. It kicks out of bounds at the 4, and Pedinoff gets the job done, and the Eagles pinned up deep in their own end when they head back out there on offense. I guess reading eyes works, Matt, in this case. Never heard a coach say he uses that style of picking. Uh, who is going to execute something like punting. Well, Coach McDonald has just done a tremendous job at his alma mater. As you mentioned, he took over in 1999. This is his ninth year, 142 and 83 is record, 91 and 57 is Colonial Athletic Association record. It led this program to the NCAA FCS semifinals in 2013 and 2014. This Eagles team knows all about success at FCS, but now they're FBS and they're struggling here today. Wirtz, nice juke move, picks up the first down and more, and Shy Wirtz dances out to the 20-yard line, picks up 16. If you knew Hampshire, you got what you want. You got a great punt. You got them deep uh, on their side of the field. And then Shy Wirtz goes to work on the edge right here, not keeping their gaps as they have most of the game. And he's finally able to find some room out on the edge. So first and ten, a positive play here for the Eagles. Hand off Ramsby, and Ramsby gets stuck at the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot of running room right there. Tackle made by Geno Miller, the safety. And this is why you, you play hard early on against a team like the Georgia Southern to try to get up on them because the basis of their offense is still running the ball, which takes a, little, a lot more time to get down the field if you don't get the big run. Second down for the Eagles. Wirtz runs option to this side. Pitch goes to Garrett. Garrett across the 30. First down for Garrett. Miller in on his second consecutive tackle, but that's a first-round run for Monteo Garrett. Nice execution. Nice read by Wards, baiting the end in. Garrett having enough speed to get in the blocking and good downfield blocking there by Miles Campbell out of the slot. So first and ten again, the Eagles starting to get their offense in sync. Wards wants to throw, fires to the outside. That is complete to Miles Campbell. Spins out of one tackle, then tackled by the defensive end downfield. Brian Carter was out there on the coverage, but that's a big pickup right there. Close to the sticks. Nine-yard pickup for the Eagles right there. Nice throw and catch uh, from Works to Campbell. But you would like to see this offense get a little more in and out. The play's got to come in and out. Uh, the clock starts becoming an enemy when you're going this slow. Works picks up the first down. And a flag out, though, late. Probably a hold against the Eagles. You know, and we've talked about this a lot as we're down to six minutes to play here in the third quarter. I mean, the Eagles have done some positive things, and when they get their offense in rhythm, it's really good. But when you're a team that you see the hold, 21, that's Wesley Fields, the running back. When you're an offense that relies on running the ball, putting together 12, 14, 15 play drives instead of having the ability to whip the ball down there in a four or five yard drive through the passing game, Leaves you a lot of opportunity to screw things up when you have to run 14, 15 plays to get a touchdown. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts to, in this. You, you have to follow the ball, and sometimes the big play happens, but for the most part, it is a built to go on three and four yards at a time. Wirtz comes to the near side. Wirtz down the sideline. And Shy Wirtz finally starting to get untracked here. Steps out of bounds at the 46-yard line, and the Eagles are in Wildcats territory. Can they follow up? Uh, one thing they haven't done all day is to consistently keep following up nice plays like this. Shy Wirtz making the right read, getting behind his blocking. Running backs coming out of the backfield and Campbell and Richardson on the end making big blocks. Wesley Fields. Just a couple of yards on the play. Wirtz is their leading rusher today. 19 carries for 74 yards. And here, as you see the game, they're still not seeming to be able to get the plays in and out, trying to change personnel, and the clock is still running. And, and, and when you have a team like New Hampshire, who has shown they can get back down the field uh, quickly, uh, you're going to have to start getting on the board and, and close this gap in the score. 
Second down now for the Eagles. Ball at the 43. Wirtz running option to the near side. Going to keep and cut back. And Wirtz down to the 38-yard line as he was tackled from behind by Kenya. Close to a first down. Going to bring up third down and one as we're right at 4.45 to play here in the third quarter. Still plenty of time for Georgia Southern to get back in this ballgame. Handoff, Fields, first down for Fields as Fields bashes down to the 30-yard line. Keel making the tackle for New Hampshire. Starting to get some push now with this offensive line of Georgia something Southern. Nothing was going in the first half. Uh, they were getting stuck at the line. Defensive front was doing a great job. Now you see them starting to uh, mush and push this front four of uh, New Hampshire back off the ball. Wirtz goes option to the other side this time, and Wirtz down to the 25-yard line. Ellison making the tackle for the Wildcats. That was the 10th play of this drive for Georgia Southern. Nice read there by Wirtz, and he's been doing the second half a great job of knowing when to pitch and when to keep the ball. And this offense still needs to speed up just a little more to get down the field. Whip to the outside. Ball is caught at the 20-yard line. Obi Fortune with the catch. Nine-yard pickup. Brings up third down and one. That was the 11th play of the drive. Remember, this drive started at their own four-yard line. The ball looked like it might have got a little tip there at the end by the defensive end. Great focus there by Obi. Fields picks up the first down. Sosnick making the tackle, but not before Fields moves the sticks. The best scoring opportunity for the Eagles since their opening drive when they fumbled at the 30-yard line. And the thing about this is New Hampshire pinned them inside on the five-yard line. They've made them have to drive the ball down the field. Georgia Southern has to put a touchdown on the board right here uh, to complete this successful drive. Clock at three minutes to play here in the third quarter. Eagles looking for their first offensive touchdown of the season. Richardson in motion behind the line. Wirtz running option again, and he's going to take a loss. Back at the 25-yard line, Balsamo, the linebacker, making the big tackle for loss and a loss of five on the play. Making a read and just going to get the ball is Balsamo right there. He stayed in his gap, and once he saw that Wirtz was committed to trying to get outside of him, he took the inside angle, knowing he had help on the outside, and go make the play. Second down and 15 now. Low snap. Wirtz has to pick it up off the ground. In trouble out there, and he's going to take another big loss. Again, that was Ellison that was there, and Quinlan Dean. And the Eagles have lost eight yards on consecutive plays now, and it's going to be third down and long. And we've seen a couple of erratic snaps here in this drive and early on in this game by the center, Curtis Rainey. Ellison, their leading tackler today. He's got eight, six of them solo. Third down in a big, long situation here for Georgia Southern. Wirtz going to run it up the middle and not get anywhere. DeAndre Drummond Myrie there to plug the gap, and it's going to be fourth down. What do you do here? You send the field goal unit on? It looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah, you need to get something on the board to try to get some good feeling in your team. Uh, you had a great drive coming off the five to get down here. Last couple of plays just have been buffed on assignments and a bad snap. Uh, but you want to reward the offense and look up at the board and see something that we're doing positive. Kick on its way, and the kick from Tyler Bass is good. 43-yard kick for Tyler Bass as the offense finally produces points. Back at Legion Field with a minute, six seconds to play here in the third quarter. Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy. Three points on the board for Georgia Southern, Wayne, but it took him 16 plays and seven minutes to get it. And I know giving up three sounds like a loss, but when you can make a team when you're up 22 to zero, have to drive 16 plays and eat up almost half a quarter uh, to score a field goal, you've had success as a defense. 
Chapman will take the ball from the two-yard line. He fumbles it, picks it up, and he's going to be dropped inside the 10-yard line. Dexter Carter with the big special teams tackle got down there on special teams and corrals Chapman at the nine. And we've seen both teams trying to make questionable decisions in the return game right there. When the timing on the kickoff is off, you kind of lose the ability to get behind your block. Great coverage there by Carter. Georgia Southern really needs to force a turnover here and get the ball back in an advantageous situation for their offense. No turnovers for the Wildcats today. Of course, the Eagles committed one, which turned into a 70-yard touchdown drive in the opening drive for the Wildcats. Final minute of the third quarter. Wildcats back out there from their nine. Pass incomplete. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage by Ty Phillips. One thing Georgia Southern... Uh, you always love turnovers, but the best thing is to try to create a three and out and give your run offense uh, the short field with the clock ticking against you. New Hampshire fans will notice that they're wearing different helmets today, going with blue helmets. Typically, they will sit, wear silver, and the logo they have on the side of their helmet here today, back to the old logo that they were sporting back in 1998. Quarterback sack inside the five-yard line is Logan Hunt. Drops Trevor Knight for the loss. Nice game between Ty Phillips and Logan Hunt in the middle of this defense. Penetration there by Ty Phillips taking up two blocks. And then you see Logan Hunt coming around, dropping those shoulders and bringing down Trey, I mean, Trevor Knight. Third and 17, first quarterback sack of the season for Logan Hunt. Pressure coming right up the middle. They pick it up, thrown to the edge, and incomplete on that long pass intended for Lorden. And it's fourth down, and the Wildcats have to punt out of their end zone. Had great pressure coming from De La Rosa at the linebacker spot. And a huge defensive stand for the Eagles after they scored their first points of the day. Interesting call uh, by New Hampshire throwing the ball on three down. Yeah. You, you would think they would come out all day long. They've had consistent success running the ball deep in your territory. You usually want to try to run it out, uh, give your punter some room here with the sack and, and two missed passes, one being deflected. You're punting off the, the two-yard line. Sanborn stands at the back of the end zone to kick, and the play is blown dead. Delay a game. This will make things just a little bit tighter quarters for New Hampshire as it's half the distance to the goal. Well, your punter can't go any further back. Yep, that's right. <laughs> the ball is being moved back, but the punter's already on, right. the, on the foot line of the end zone. And the defense is just a step closer, right? <laughs> Watch 24, Freeman off the edge. He's coming in there. They're just going to take a safety. How about that? Very interesting. The old Did not even <laughs> try to punt it out of the back of the end zone. Instead, they'll take a safety. The old safety trick. Instead of punting the ball and possibly giving you the ball with a, a decent return, even if you had a good punt. That's right. Uh, they would have got the ball at midfield. Uh, I take the safety. I give you the two points. Uh, your offense hasn't had, you know, much success. It hasn't been in the end zone yet. And then I get to kick the ball off and try to create a, a longer field. But a very interesting strategy, not one that you see employed very often. You see, they take the safety. So you say, wow, they give up two points. But what they also do is they now get to kick off normally and not a free kick situation from the 20. Instead, they, uh, they actually kick off from the 20. Pardon me. Uh, and that's it's very interesting they, they feel like they can probably get better field position out of this than they had if they punted it away Yeah, we covered this and we've been covering good all day. We make Georgia Southern do what we've done all game have to go 50 60 70 80 yards to get in scoring uh, Contention uh, great call right there. There's something you usually see more 
had with four or five minutes left in a game. Yeah, that's why and I'm not surprised. A, and not a quarter. Yeah, I'm surprised that they do this here before the end of the third quarter. Now, let's see. Are they going to free kick it? Or are they going to kick off the tee? Or are they going to punt? You have the option here. And so Sanborn looks like he's going to take the free kick as a punt. And two are deep for the Eagles right now. That's Campbell and Ramsby. Campbell's going to take it from the 28. And we have whistles. Are they going to say that he called a fair catch? If he did, that's a huge mistake by Campbell. Or did he? Four seconds left on the clock. I'd like to see if he called a fair catch. If he did, that was a huge mistake by Campbell. I think Campbell was trying to let Ramsey know that he was going to take the ball. Sometimes when you have two guys back here. Six seconds. Six seconds. They'll put six seconds on the clock. I didn't I see, see I didn't see any indication. I think you're right though. The indication that he made was for Ramsby that I'm going to take the ball. I, it was not a fair catch. Certainly was not intended to be a fair catch, but that's how the officials interpreted it. And as you said, you usually don't get in this situation a lot. So the players, they don't really know the rules to this as well. So a bad break there for Georgia Southern. I don't think that Miles Campbell intended to be calling a fair catch there, but that's what the officials thought he was doing. So first and 10 on what is likely the final play of the third quarter. Wirtz going to fire off the play action, and the ball gets batted down at the line of scrimmage, or at least about four or five yards beyond the line of scrimmage as DeAndre Drummond Myrie batted it out of the air. With two seconds to play in the quarter and also a flag down on the field, a personal foul. Roughing the quarterback. So that'll be a 15-yard mark off against New Hampshire and a first down. Just a short drop here by Shy Works. And right at the end, just no call for that yep. uh, by Juwan Horton. Yeah, Juwan Horton. Horton. Pushed him down. This will be the final play of the third quarter in all likelihood, unless we have another penalty. They run the pitch to Campbell coming around the round. And Campbell, Myrie going to grab him and throw him to the ground. Georgia Southern officials thought that they had perhaps grabbed his face mask or horse collared him. No flag there. That's the end of the third quarter. So we played 45 minutes from Legion Field with 15 to go. Georgia Southern. With five points on the board in that third quarter, inching a little bit closer, but running out of time here at Legion Field. Second down and eight as we start the fourth quarter. Matt Stewart and Wayne Gandy with you in Birmingham. 22-5, New Hampshire with the lead, but the Eagles have the ball. Pitch goes to Fields. Fields across the 50 and Fields down to the 46. Kenya making the tackle. Fields going to be short by about a yard. Georgia Southern offensively has shown more life in the second half. Uh, this New Hampshire defense has been on the field a long time. Uh, and offensively, New Hampshire seems like they uh, just trying to get the game over. Uh, first half they were attacking, but Georgia Southern has set themselves up to try to get back in this game. 26-18 in minutes, time of possession lead for Georgia Southern in this game. And Wirtz not going anywhere. There's Kenya again. Kenya playing against the home state team, as we mentioned. Yeah, he's an Atlanta area kid. They really like him a lot. They don't get a lot of recruits out of the state of Georgia or the southeast, but they love his motor, and they think he's going to develop into like a 260-pound linebacker eventually. Just defensive end, pardon me. Just following Drew Wilson, 61. Down the line is Kenya pushing him down and making that tackle. Nice fourth, read. Fourth and one, they go for it. Fields got it with the second effort. Kenya hit him in the backfield, but he was able to break through that tackle, and Fields picks up the first down at the 45. And if you knew Hampshire, even though they converted right there, you're kind of doing just making them drag this game out. The more time you can make, the more plays you can make them run and bend and not break. Kick, make them kick field goals. You, you really hurt this offense. So first and 10 for the Eagles. Now in Wildcats territory. Wirtz has time to throw. Firing across the middle. Off the hands of Campbell. 
at the 34-yard line. That's small throwing to smaller. 5'11", shy words throwing to 5'6", Miles Campbell. Pushing the pocket. New Hampshire defensive front knowing what to do. Make him throw amongst the trees. Uh, right there, ball is catchable by Campbell's Miles Campbell. He's got to catch that ball. Got to make those plays. Second down and 10. Just letting him just, and then he was crawling on the green things like he was coming. Wirtz going to run. And Wirtz picks up a first down. Kenya gets him out of bounds. Actually, that was Jared Keel. Pardon me. Keel with the tackle at the 33-yard line and a first down for the Eagles. One of the first times in this game that Wirtz has been able to uh, take advantage of New Hampshire getting out of their rush lanes. When you have a mobile quarterback like Wirtz, you got to pressure him, even if you don't get to him, by staying in the integrity of your lanes right there, being able to find a crease and pay, make this defense pay. Handoff goes to Fields and nothing doing. Roberts is there for the tackle along with Keel. Very little gain that time on the carry by Wesley Fields. I think it's interesting. We just really haven't seen a whole lot of, out of the running backs game. In the running game, the running game's been worse, but the running backs have not produced a whole lot here today. And New Hampshire has taken that approach to make Wirtz run the ball, make him pull and make the play. Catch is made out there on the edge, and Mashad inside the 20-yard line down to the 18. How about Mark Mashad going up and fighting the defender for the ball and winning the battle? Nice read here by Wirtz. Defender was actually in position, just back to the ball, and that's a nice grab right there uh, for this Georgia Southern offense. First and 10 from the 18. Fields gets the handoff. Kenya, the first guy to hit him, and then Keel. Actually, it was Jacob Bradshaw who finishes him off, 60. I think Kenya got there first, and then Bradshaw finished off the play. And you're banging his uh, right shoulder, leaving the game right there. But nice read by this defensive front. They have kept, for the most part, uh, this Georgia Southern offensive line on their side of the ball, letting the, the linebackers and safeties make the play. Second down and long. Works running option. Nothing doing that time. Quinlan Dean, the Mike linebacker, drops him right there at the line of scrimmage. Third down and long coming up for Georgia Southern. That was the 10th play of this drive. They've driven 54 yards. Quinlan Dean made the tackle there, but the whole play was busted by Brian Carter getting that penetration. You can see uh, Shy Works have to take a step back to get around the corner, and that's all you need. Gives you linebackers time to come and make the tackle. Eagles 8 of 15 on third downs today after going 0 for 15 last week. They're facing third and long right here. Words wants to fire. Throws complete to Fortune, and Fortune's close to the first down as he stretches his body after making the catch, and he's going to be close to the eight, and that's close to a first down. Nice see if fake. they measure. They don't. It's fourth down. Nice throw there by Words, Right on the money. And it will see, be a first down. Pardon me, Wayne. And you see the receiver there, uh, Fortune, just taking that second effort that we saw New Hampshire in the first half make. Now you see Georgia Southern players making those kind of effort plays. So first and goal to go at the eight-yard line. Ball gets away from Wirtz. Fields picks it up, tries to get to the edge. Got a big block out there and a nice open field tackle, but the block's going to cost them as they drop the flag. Prince Smith Jr. makes the tackle. There was a big block. Apparently, it's going to be a block in the back or a block on a defenseless player, which is a new call available to them as well this year. And we'll see what that call is, but that's going to cost them. So targeting is going to be the call here. Tough situation to put an uh, offensive player in. Uh, you, you, you see the man chasing the ball, about to make the tackle. Uh, receivers are taught to come back and make the block. He got his head in front. Um, didn't see his helmet go in there. Used his shoulder. I, I, and that's Obi Fortune. It's, it's, They've called the targeting penalty on Obi Fortune. 
And now they're going to still. Now they have to review to determine whether it actually was a call or not. That is uh, DeAndre Drummond Myrie, the safety who's still hurt on the play. And it's a it's a hard play to call, man. I know you're trying to clean up the game, uh, but right there you could see that Mordre was trying to make this tackle, and without this block, yeah. Ramsey probably would have gotten tackled right yeah. there. Or yeah. excuse me, Fields would have probably gotten tackled no, right you're there right. on the spot. No, you're right. I mean, uh, you know, what what alternative did OB Fortune have? He threw a what I thought was a clean block. That's still to be determined by the officials here. It didn't look like targeting to me, not in the classical sense. It was a it was a hard block, no doubt about it. Depleted him, knocked him, knocked him maybe loopy a little bit. But uh, I mean, it was. And they you, threw a flag on it. I don't know that it was an illegal block, and it certainly was necessary on the play. And as a player, I want uh, Fortune to hit me up top. The worst thing in a play like that is for you to see me and come hit me in the, in the knee or the ankle, uh, and that will really get me out of the game. I want you to hit me up top, but right here, if he doesn't make that block. Yeah, that's not target. Wow. Number nine, disqualified. Wow. I'm shocked by that call because it appeared that Fortune blocked him with the shoulder and the arm. It certainly was a hard block. I am really surprised at this call. Watch number nine, OB Fortune, and the block on Myrie here. And I know in, in this angle you, you start because... Maori is not looking at the person that's about to hit him. You think, oh, he's defenseless, but he's about to go make the tackle. So sometimes you can't see everything. And he was focused on making the tackle, and that's why he didn't see the, the receiver coming back to block him. Mm. I'm really surprised by that call. There might have been helmet to helmet. It certainly was not because he lowered the helmet and tried to strike him with the helmet. Still first down. But that was my interpretation of it, and the officials had a different look at it, and their call stands, so that will push it back to the 23-yard line and make it first and goal from there. You're surprised by that call? I'm very shocked yeah. by it. I, I think that uh, you have to give some credence to that the defender is going to make the tackle when the person comes to block yeah. him. Yeah, if he does not make that block, then he makes the tackle. So works back to pass. Heavy rush. Hit as he throws, and it's intercepted in the end zone by Isaiah Perkins. And Wirtz got leveled by Jaywan Horton just as he threw. And that ball sailed on Wirtz, intercepted easily by Perkins in the end zone. So New Hampshire gets the ball back. They withstand the Eagles' first and goal. And the Wildcats. Well, Georgia Southern misses a great opportunity, and now the Wildcats go on offense at their 20-yard line here, and we'll see if they can milk some clock as Evan Gray gets the handoff and picks up three yards on the play. Rashad Bird making the tackle for the Eagles. But that was a great opportunity. The Eagles had it first and goal at the eight-yard line, and they come away with no points on the interception by Isaiah Perkins. Even if they could have knocked a field goal on it, it brought it within two scores. Now with the interception, you give it to this New Hampshire offense that we kind of take, had taken the third quarter off. Let's see if they can get their run game that really was hurting this defense in the first half back on track. And they're running a lot of time here on the play clock. Down to four on the play clock when they snap it right there. They go to the air, surprisingly enough. It's off the hands of O'Connor, the intended target, who has nine catches today. And it's going to be third down. Surprised that they threw the ball. I am very surprised. Uh, a lot of success on first down. Uh, this ball right here still catchable by O'Connor. Surprised he didn't come up with that catch. He's a sure hand receiver. But very surprised that first and second down on a drive like this where you can eat up some clock. You didn't put it on the ground. Yeah, nine catches on 12 targets for O'Connor today. Third down and seven.
Goodrich goes in motion. They run a screen side to the other side, and that's O'Connor with his 10th catch of the day. He's run out of bounds at the 26, and he did get out of bounds. That's good news for the Eagles. He didn't want to get out of bounds. They drove him out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock. And now they got the clock running again. Apparently, they're going to say that he wasn't out of bounds. O'Connor right there making a grab. If he could have gotten to the outside, outside of that uh, left tackle, uh, Heron's block. He could have maybe converted that third and long, going out of bounds as a as a junior. He cannot make that kind of play. He's been around too long, played too much football, uh, not to keep the clock rolling. Pedinoff going to kick here. He's two for a 39-yard kick average today. Standing at his 13-yard line. Line drive kick. They try to kick it away from Campbell into the short side, and it goes kick out of bounds. Let's see where they end up spotting it as the official keeps walking down the sideline to find the spot, and he does at the 44. So that's where the Eagles go back on offense, and now the clock has become an issue for them with 8.28 to play, and we'll take a timeout. Eagles on offense when we get back. Eight twenty-eight to play in the fourth quarter here at Legion Field. Matt Stewart along with Wayne Gandy. Again, this game being played here in Birmingham instead of Statesboro because of Hurricane Irma. It's not been a good day for the Eagles as New Hampshire has dominated pretty much throughout. Works in trouble, scrambling around, coming to the near side. Going to take a nice missile tackle right there by Balsamo, the linebacker. Once again, Balsamo coming from that safety slash linebacker position and really making contact when he comes up right there. The integrity of this defense has been strong all day. Not a lot of gap to throw and not a lot of run, uh, area to run in uh, for Warts. Less than eight minutes now for the Eagles. Time is definitely now a major concern as the ball is caught out there by Mashad, and he crosses the 50. Gets down to the 49-yard line as Martin Mashad picks up his third catch of the day. He's their leading receiver today. Trying to get that effort, trying to make it uh, just shoestring tackle right there by New Hampshire. Works, scrambling and throwing on the run, throws it away, and now it's fourth down. Mm. So a fourth down coming up with the clock at 723. Works 11 of 21. Passing today for 93 yards, 28 carries, 81 yards. And rolling the dice here once again, but time is against you. You haven't had a lot of success. You still haven't seen the end zone. Uh, so even though you're at midfield, you need to get and convert this to keep this drive going. You're running out of time. Yeah, they really have no choice. They have to go for it right here. Running option, Wirtz going to cut back in the middle and pick up the first down and more. Turns on the Jets inside the 20 and down to the nine-yard line. They'll spot it at the seven, and you see the danger of shy Wirtz when he can get in the open field. Nice read, nice play. Uh, cut back in the middle of the field. Seems like he really caught the, this New Hampshire defense by surprise by cutting it back so far uh, and really able to show you how fast he is as a quarterback. First and goal from the seven. Can the Eagles finally punch it in? And Fields down to the five-yard line, picks up two on the play. Holt making the tackle for the Wildcats. And they need to score in a hurry, too, because the clock is going to be under six and a half by the time they snap it again. And they're down 17 points. Handoff, Ramsby, touchdown. First touchdown of the season for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Took them seven plus quarters to get it. But they finally get it here at Legion Field to cut the lead to 22-11. Finally following up a, a good play. Good positive plays right here in the middle of the defense. Been trying to get in there all day has these running backs and quarterback and works. And finally, they made some uh, big room in the middle to get some big plays. Flynn the hold and the PAT by.
A look at downtown Birmingham. That'll be the home for the Georgia Southern Eagles till at least Tuesday. They've decided to stay here in Birmingham at least that long while they wait for everything to blow through. Hopefully, Statesboro will go unscathed as Hurricane Irma approaches the Florida coast. But they are here, and that's the reason why we're playing this game at Legion Field. Out of precaution, they moved the game to Legion Field here in Birmingham. This would have been a home game for Georgia Southern. And, of course, you don't really take time to think about all this kind of stuff. But this was a big hit for Georgia Southern financially because they lost the gate of their home opener. And it's good to see UAB back in football uh, after having a break. Uh, but Georgia Southern, not just financially, but to the players, uh, who uh, this is their last season who looks forward to those home games now uh, won't be home until October O'Connor on the return up to the 22 yard line and we are playing at historic Legion Field as you mentioned you played three Iron Bowl games here but here's <laughs> just this is historic this was this this stadium was built in 1927 named in honor of the American Legion It's home of the UAB Blazers home of the Iron Bowl from 1948 actually a little bit longer than 1988 both Auburn and Alabama have used uh, Legion Field as their home stadium. They've had the Dixie Bowl, the Hall of Fame Bowl, All-American Bowl, Birmingham Bowl here, and they still use it for uh, high school state championships. And uh, remember the Birmingham Vulcans, the Birmingham Americans, and the old USFL and the World Football League? They played professional football here as well, and it was also the host to Olympic soccer in 1996. Yeah, last time I was out there, there was a guy named John Copeland and Eric Curry, <laughs> two top five picks in the draft coming at me. Well, you were a first-round pick yourself, so that was a great <laughs> battle. Uh, you played the, the first three years of uh, 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 as an Auburn Tiger, you played the Iron Bowl here. Your senior year, you got to play at Jordan-Hare Stadium, and you guys won that game, right? Yeah, a little home cooking. We finally won that uh, in a big fashion to go undefeated that year, but it great battles here, great stadium uh, in Birmingham, and Alabama as a whole is a great football state, uh, not just on the collegiate level, but in the high school level. So second down and eight, New Hampshire milking clock here. You'll keep an eye on that play clock here as they probably will not snap it until it clicks under five minutes. Five seconds, pardon me. It's down to four right here. And Knight flushed out of the pocket, going to run to this side. He's got some running room across the 30 and 35, stepping out of bounds at the 37-yard line. That'll be a fresh set of downs for the Wildcats. And some of you are wondering why Knight would run this out of bounds and not try to slide and stay in bounds. Being chased like that, he has a yard marker in his mind for first down. And that's all he's focused on is trying to get to that and keep that first down going. Uh, you like to see him slide, but once he left that pocket, he had a thought of where the marker was to get to to make it a first down. Yeah, really good. I mean, really good decision-making right there. He's 12 of 21, 118 passing, couple of touchdowns today. He's run now seven times for 49 yards. Not great numbers, but his team's winning. Comes to the near side, steps out of bounds again at the 41-yard line, pick up a four on the play. And this is something we thought we might see uh, in the first couple of drives of this half where uh, you give him the ability with a read option to run the ball, get three or four yards, keep the drive going. Uh, they have settled into trying to throw the ball, and it really has let Georgia Southern back into this game. Georgia Southern uses a timeout here. That's going to leave them with just one. So surprised that they called the timeout there because Knight had stepped out of bounds. That should have stopped the clock. So to burn a timeout right there after the clock had been stopped seems kind of wasteful because you're going to need those timeouts defensively to try to stop the clock. You have to score twice. you got to get the ball back and score and then get get the ball back again and score here in the matter of four and a half minutes. Especially when you have an offense that's really run base. So even when you put shot works back there to throw it, uh, you have to give it 50-50 chance that he's going to pull it down and run it. He's going to need that timeout in the middle of the field. Uh, so definitely, like you said, very surprising, especially with Trevor Knight running out of bounds, actually helping you on the last two plays with stopping the clock momentarily. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm a big proponent of saving those timeouts. I hate to see when offenses burn timeouts. I know sometimes you got to do it, but offenses can control the clock with your play calling and what what you know and where you run the ball, where you pass the ball. Defenses can't stop the clock. They can only use it. They can only do that by burning a timeout. And it's all about who's your trigger man uh, as far as keeping timeouts. 
When you have a guy that you know how he know how to manage it. When you have a quarterback that you know how to manage the two-minute drill, things like that, uh, you can burn the timeouts. But someone like Shy Warts, and even if Trevor Knight was in this situation, you want to give them as many timeouts as you can uh, to get the ball down the field, and you're down two scores. Yeah. So after seeing the Georgia Southern defensive alignment, New Hampshire burns their first timeout. That leaves them with two. Now, let me see. It, the scoreboard here, I thought that Georgia Southern had used two timeouts already. They have two timeouts remaining, so that's – that's good news for them, and New Hampshire has two timeouts remaining. So second down and six, and the Eagles really need to get the ball back. The handoff goes to Gray. He gets slammed to the ground. Great penetration there by Ty Phillips, the sophomore out of Moultrie, Georgia, in Colquitt County High School, and it's going to be third down. And now Georgia Southern burns their second timeout, leaving them with one. And this is why you run the ball even if you don't get any yards because you want to take a team like Georgia Southern, who is base run oriented, make them burn their timeout. So if nothing when you punt this ball, other than them having uh, stopped you, if they have to burn all three of their timeouts to do that, it's a success for your offense, especially when you're up two scores and there's only four and a half minutes left in the game. Well, when they go back and, and do the the review of this ball game, and of course we still have 4:32 to play. Statistically, Georgia Southern looks on the right side of the ledger. They've got 325 yards of total offense, and New Hampshire has only 267. Certainly, Georgia Southern has outrushed them, which they typically do. Passing-wise, they're almost even with them as well. Only a 25-yard difference in the passing game in favor of New Hampshire. Third down, Knight throws it's complete to O'Connor, and O'Connor is going to pick up the first down at the 50-yard line. What a huge catch and run by O'Connor. He had a long way to go to get to the sticks, and he got there with his 11th catch of the day. And beautiful call here by the offensive coordinator. Crossing route, the tight end. Uh, Woods comes by in a kind of pick motion, making the safety Freeman have to belly over and misstep in chasing O'Connor. And right there, nice pass and, and the effort at the end to make sure and secure that he got the first down. O'Connor now with 11 catches today. He certainly, I think, has been the difference maker out of these two teams this afternoon. They've had no answer for him. Knight, the run, and he got it hard from Tamarcio Reese, the Mike linebacker, saw him start to take off and said, not on my watch, you won't. Nice come up by Reese catching the quarterback, trying to squirt through a little hold. Real misread here on this read option. Probably should have just handed the ball off, decided to keep it. Mm. Hello. Can you say hello to me, <laughs> uh, Mr. Reese? Yeah, Coach Summers believes that, uh, you know, Reese reminds him a lot of Ironhead Gallon, the star linebacker they had in the program the last couple of years. Got a shot in the NFL back in the spring. In fact, Georgia Southern, Gallon didn't make it. Georgia Southern's got six players on opening day rosters in the National Football League. That's an all-time high for Georgia Southern as the flag comes out and a delay a game. Matt Breida, the great running back, made it with the 49ers. Their kicker, Young Way Koo, made it with the Chargers. Yukimi Aligwe, rookie with the Chiefs. And then you got the veterans, Jarek McKinnon with the Vikings, J.J. Wilcox with the Steelers, and Edwin Jackson with the Colts. And when you have that kind of talent, that's why you saw this program move up from FCS to mm -hmm. FBS because they started getting that type of talent, that NFL-type talent and Teams are scouting them to see what they have down in Statesboro. Second down, handoff goes to Gray, and nothing doing. I'm guessing the Eagles going to burn their last time out right there as Deshaun Cooper was the first guy at the point of attack. And clock continues to run. Eagles holding on to that last time out. It's third down and 14. Here you just want ball security if you knew Hampshire. You made them burn up. Uh, you want to make them burn up their last time out. You don't want to kill the clock for them by throwing or running out of bounds. You want something where uh, Trevor Knight probably is making a play with his feet and keep the clock rolling. Again, that three-man offensive line alignment, and it doesn't fool Georgia Southern as Goodrich gets stopped at the 40-yard line, and the Eagles use their last time out, stopping the clock with 219. 
and that was the thing to do. The last thing you want to do is not have a timeout when they line up the punt because they will burn it all up <laughs> trying to uh, wait for the punt. Yeah, you set this formation, a little trickery, uh, still knowing that you're going to run the ball, putting in some safe hands to ball security. If it pops out and you get something big, okay, but right there, the main purpose of that kind of play is just to make them burn that last timeout. Now you punt the ball uh, and then give them two minutes to try to execute a, a two-minute offense from a spread option type offense that needs to get in the end zone or get on the board twice, excuse me. What the Eagles could really use here is a big play on special teams. I don't know that they're going to get the opportunity to do that. They got 10 men on the line. And they send a bunch. Pedinoff gets it out of there. Campbell calls fair catch and makes it at the 21-yard line, almost interfered with on his catch. And that's where the Eagles will go on offense with two minutes and 12 seconds remaining, no timeouts remaining, and needing two scores. They're down 10 points. A little slow punt here, almost uh, giving them time to get to it. But he just wants to make sure he gets the ball off. And now if you're New Hampshire, you take the field. You let your defenders, let uh, anything in front of them, let them catch the ball, make the tackle, uh, keep them in bounds. The clock is your friend uh, in this situation. They have no timeouts. You let them know that and, and stay away from penalties. Yeah. Here's the big question. Does Georgia Southern have any kind of downfield passing game here? And we haven't seen it yet. We'll see if they do. Works scrambling to his right, throwing on the run, and nearly intercepted. I believe Campbell was the intended target, and it was nearly intercepted by Evan Horn, the safety. And when you have a quarterback that's under six feet, you kind of have to get the ball down the field like you want to in big chunks. You're going to have to move the target point, the launch point, as they call it, to get the ball so he can see who he's throwing the ball to. It's kind of hard for shorter quarterbacks to run two-minute drills from the pocket. Yeah, Horn is out there. Remember, DeAndre Drummond Myrie got hurt on that targeting block. And apparently there was also a holding penalty. I believe that's what the official said on that play, which was declined. So second down and 10. Heavy rush from the backside, and Wirt's going to take a quarterback sack at the nine-yard line. Jaywan Horton with the sack, and that's going to drop him back inside the 10. His second sack of the day coming off that corner. Uh, early on, he got a, a roughness on the quarterback penalty. But since then, he has been bearing down pressure on Wirtz every time he's dropped back to pass. So third down and 19. Wirtz stands in the pocket, fires, and nearly intercepted by Horn again. Mashad was the intended target, and now it's going to be fourth down. Jawan Horton once again coming off the edge, applying the pressure. You can see how Wirtz is going back to the line of scrimmage. He's uh, between the running and the pressure in the pass game by Horton, uh, the physical play of New Hampshire is starting to wear on him. So fourth down and a Hail Mary play coming up here for the Eagles. Rush is coming at Wirtz. He's flushed out of the pocket. He's scrambling around. Now he's going to have to take off and run. He's beyond the line of scrimmage. He's going to be tackled from behind at the 21-yard line by Quinlan Dean, and that's going to do it as the ball is going to go over on downs. And New Hampshire is going to pick up their first win over an FBS opponent since 19, or pardon me, since 2008. This defense of New Hampshire has been outstanding all day long. They definitely dominated the first half, and they came into the second half and did just enough uh, in the right situation, creating third and long, and now with Georgia Southern having to pass the ball, being able to get the kind of pressure uh, on an offense that's not built for throwing, um, to throw it off and, and make another fourth and 19, and shot work just not can come up with it. So New Hampshire in their victory formation, the Eagles have no more timeouts. All the Wildcats have to do is take a knee as they will improve to 2-0 and on the season. Already ranked number 12 in the FCS coaches poll this week. Good chance they'll move into the top 10 with this victory over the FBS Georgia Southern Eagles. And you have to be impressed with the physicality of this team. Uh, both fronts, offensive line, defensive line, doing a great job 
how the backs in the first half finished off the runs, and the decision-making by Trevor Knight uh, was great today. This will snap a seven-game losing streak for the Wildcats against FBS teams. This will be their first victory against an FBS team since they beat Army 28-10 in 2008. And it'll be their second-ever victory against Georgia Southern. They beat them in the 2004 playoffs. They've beaten them here in the 2017 regular season as no more plays will be run, and New Hampshire will walk out of here 22-12 to 12 winners. Head coach Sean McDonald has to be impressed with his team, uh, probably taking the main victory, which is a big rivalry for them, uh, you know, to heart, but truly loving this, going on the road, being an FBS team like he did today. Well, Sean McDonald said when they beat him in 2004, that was the, the first time they'd been in the FCS playoffs. His kids really didn't even know where they were going to play. They just knew they were getting an opportunity to play a football game and called it one of the biggest wins in their program history. Certainly, this was a big one here today as they are now 2-0 and on the season. And they come to Birmingham and they defeat the Georgia Southern Eagles by a final score of 22 to 12. And it was just nice to see Georgia Southern come out here, show a lot of heart in the second. We know they are dealing with the hurricane relocation. We'll be here in Birmingham a couple of days until they figure out what's going on. But hopefully they can get refocused by the time they take on Indiana. New Hampshire will be at Holy Cross next Saturday. Georgia Southern off for a couple of weeks until they play at Indiana. Final score, New Hampshire, 22-12 winners over Georgia Southern. And now for Wayne Gandy and the entire ESPN team, I'm Matt Stewart saying so long from Legion Field in Birmingham. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live on the ESPN app or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN Networks. Log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.